Welcome everyone to the Tuesday, April 23rd meeting of the Health and Education Committee. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll entertain a motion. Madam okay, Chairman, I'll review those minutes. I'll find them to be in order and move that they be approved as, as communicated. Thank you. So, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, we've got a um, guest with us tonight, um, Mr. Gary Ensmere with the Tennessee Volunteer Challenge Academy. He's going to come on up and kind of walk us through a little bit about their organization and what is they've been doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate y'all giving me just a few minutes. Uh, we're in Nashville. It, it's, we're a state of Tennessee entity. We're, we're not uh, charging. We're not selling anything. It's a free program for the kids. We are here because last year, 6,820 kids didn't graduate from high school in Tennessee. We're after those kids. We want to get those kids to become productive, tax-paying citizens. So that's 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 why the program was created 25 years ago. There are 40 programs like ours across the country. You know, there's some neat stats there if you want to look at them. But uh, two phases. Phase one is residential. The kids live with us for 22 weeks at our facility in Nashville. We have two start dates. January and July. That's the only time you can start the program. Um, we're a school. We're a state of Tennessee school. So the kids are coming there to continue their education. But while they are there, we're going to work on these other areas. And I'll talk about those in just a minute. So phase one is 22 weeks at the academy. Phase two is when they leave our program, there's a mentor who, who works with them back at their home. The kids leave and go home. And that mentor who we train, who we do a TBI background check on, that mentor works with them for the following year. So that's the second phase of the program, and, and it's a critical phase of, of the program also. What we are, you know, we're looking for 16 to 18 year old kids. On day one, they have to be 16 to 18. They can turn 19 on day two, but on day one, they have to be 16 to 18. Truancy, behavior issues, education issues, the structure of school, the structure of home is not working for them. That's the kid we're wanting. This is more of a technical term. I, I know it doesn't apply a lot here, but the, we're not looking for a criminal. We're, we can't take a kid who has an adult felony. Now, juveniles can't have felonies, adult felonies, so <coughs> some terminology, but we're not looking for a criminal. Must be a citizen. We're a drug-free program. We don't test the kids when they walk in the door, <coughs> but we know while they're there, they're not going to get drugs. Uh, they, they went home for Easter. They just came back today from their Easter break, and we told them beforehand, we're going to test you when you come back. So today they were tested. I don't know the results. Hopefully they all did well. Uh, well, we're not. Kids must volunteer to be there. The judge cannot court order them to be there. That kid has to look at me or somebody else and say, hey, I may not want to come, but I, I know this is what I need. I know that the friends I'm hanging out with aren't right. I know my home life's not great, or I know I'm, I'm not going to school, and the teachers are telling me you better do something or you're or you're out of here. So uh, we're not a detention facility. Lock, there are no locked doors. They live in open bay barracks. The front gate's wide open. We, we, we have people there to watch the kids. We have cameras to see when the kid's walking out, and we'll go chase them down. But, but we are not a detention facility, and we're not a military recruitment program. 25 years ago, we're in our fourth class, so we've got two years of staff which are, are, are not good, but 25 years of stats nationwide, 10 to 15 percent join the military. So we're not a military recruitment program, but we definitely show the kids what's out there. Uh, we're free. It doesn't cost the family anything. The funding comes, y'all are talking about ROTC, the, the same funding that helps ROTC programs from the Office of Secretary of Defense, we're a part of that. So and 25 percent comes from the state, that's DCS. Uh, like a, that's just repeating myself there. So we are a state of Tennessee certified high school. There's our letter from the Department of Education. State of Tennessee certified teachers. We have a testing lab for the high set. So uh, you know we're we're a high school. Uh, when a kid transfers to us from Rutherford County, he comes off Rutherford County's books. He's our he's our kid now. There are three options when a kid comes. If they come to us with enough credits, they can get their high school diploma. If they come to us with, if he's a 18 year old with 10 credits, the high set, the, you know high set and GED, Tennessee has high set instead of the GED now. So um, 
if he comes to us like that, 18 years and, and old and 10 credits, the GED is the best option. So that's what we're going to do. Half of our kids come and go back to high school. And, and to me, that's a great success story. When a kid, we can change their behavior a little bit and, and they go back to their high school and are successful and they graduate with their friends, that, that's a success story. So that's, I love that. But those are the three options. And, and when a kid walks in the door on day one, we sit with the parents, we sit with the kid and the lead teacher, and they discuss the education path that they'll be on. We use a Plato system, but we only do that about half the time because a kid in front of a computer for eight hours or six and a half hours a day is, is worthless. So it, it's about half and half. We do have extra uh, opportunities for the kids to study in the evenings. That helps them. But they'll get four to six credits while they're with us. We're not a dip diploma mill, so we're not gonna, they're not going to come out of there with 10 credits for five months. That's a typical day. They wake up at 5, they do PT, physical training. They go back and they shower. They, they straighten up their barracks. They make their beds. They sweep the floors. They, they march to the dining facility. They go to school. Everything's structured. We have guys and girls here. They do everything separately. The, the girls live separately. The girls eat separately. They go to school separately. We take away that distraction. So. Um, in the evenings, team building, we, we ha we're having guest speakers tomorrow. The, the head basketball coach of TSU is coming in. We've got, we have National Auto Diesel College coming in to talk to kids about careers. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, okay, health and uh, academic excellence. That's what that, the piece of paper that kid walks out with. But, but these other things, that's what's going to change a kid. So we talk about health and hygiene. Some kids <coughs> just don't know how to wash their clothes, don't know the correct way to brush their teeth. We have so many kids come in. Job skills. We have a JTG. Have you heard of JTG? Uh, jobs to graduates. A teacher who comes in and teaches. So we have our standard math and English and history and science teachers. But this guy teaches resume writing and uh, you know interview techniques and all these things a kid needs to walk into a job. Uh, while they're there, they have leadership positions, but they, uh, they also learn how to be a follower. We have life coping skills. Some of these kids have behavior issues and, and aren't, aren't used to people telling them what to do. So uh, we have four counselors. Uh, early in the program, they're more behavior counseling. Later in the program, they're more academic counseling. Um, academic counseling, the, the, well, the kids take the ASAP while they're there. They take the ACT. We expect we uh, apply that for the Hope Scholarship when it's time. Anything a typical high school will do, we're going to do that for the kid to get them ready. Physical fitness. Each kid is required to get 40 hours. I'm not jump down to the bottom one. Each kid is required to get 40 hours of service to community. So they go out and work homeless shelters, food banks, work with uh, disabled. Just it, it's the school's way of giving back, and it also shows these kids that you know they they may have better stuff. Okay, um, job skills. Back to that week, we take kids on tours of TSU and MTSU. We, uh, we've had sent a couple to Tennessee Tech. Uh, I hate to say this, go Tech. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, we have jobs fair. We have electricians union come in. They have an awesome apprenticeship program in Nashville. They'll take a kid and find him a job at an electrical company and send him to school at night. And then five years later, he's, a, he's an electrician making a lot of money. So college is great, but we're going to show them everything. Can you take them to the community colleges or to the TCAT? TCAT, we, TCAT <laughs> very often. That, that's a regular, because it's White Ridge Road. It's right down the street from us. We go, we, uh, we, we show them everything. Uh, Thompson Machine in Laverne has a great program for bringing kids in. And they send them down to Mississippi to school. So they love us, and they'll, they'll come talk to the kids. And we do bring the military, military recruiters in. Uh, no social media. Uh, kids walk in. They no cell phones. No Facebook. Uh, there is off of it. Uh, we let the kids call home once a week, and they they write letters all they want. The kids will go home once. This this class, the January class, they go home for Easter. The July class, they go home for Thanksgiving. Uh, we have family days where the families can come visit. When we train the mentors, the mentors can visit with the kids on a more regular basis, trying to build up a relationship with them. Kids are 
required, supposed to nominate their own mentor. Some can't, they just don't know someone worthy of being a mentor. So we help them find mentors. Uh, that's vital to, to what the program's about. Uh, you can see where the kids come from. They're, they're from all over the state. We get, you would think the middle Tennessee would be our number one area, but it's Knox County. And that's because Judge Tim Irwin is the juvenile judge there and he loves the program. So he, he sends a lot of kids to us. He was our guest speaker in December, and he got there and said, how many of y'all wanted to quit when you walked in the door? And everyone raised their hand, and he goes, how many of you are glad you stayed? And everyone raised their hand. That's, it is the first couple weeks, kids don't want to be there. They don't want to shave their head and say yes ma'am and no ma'am and uh, you know, not speak until you're spoken to. And, but as they, towards the end, it's, it's kind of interesting. They get a little bit disruptive because they don't want to go home. So they're used to that structure. So Gary, you said it's not court order, so how does a judge get them to go? Voluntel. A judge can say, look, little Billy, you're, this is what you've done. You're going to court, but if you go over here and graduate from this program, I'll forget about this. Uh, yeah, so that is that is the norm. That's a good way of not court ordering. <laughs> and, and, and that's the judge. Your order. Judge Paul down in Chattanooga is doing the same thing, and, and it's everybody talk to this. It's, it's a great option. You know, and it's for the kid who, you know, like I say, we're not looking for a violent kid. We're, we interview a kid. If, if, the, if the record shows he's violent, we're not going to take him. We want somebody who's just rough around the edges and needs to get back on track. How many students can you accommodate? So you can accommodate 100. Right, we're funded to graduate 100 twice a year. That means we bring in about 125. You know, 25 years of history, 25 are going to leave. Well, whether we kick them out or uh, they, they quit. We, we have, have an unofficial system called the gauntlet in place. When a kid says, I want to quit, uh, they may talk to a staff member and the staff member says, okay, if you want to quit, I'll let you talk to the counselor tomorrow. And so then, okay, the counselor says, I'll let you talk to the lead counselor the next day. I'll let you talk to the mayor finally to make the final decision. And by then they forgot about it. <laughs> but like, what was happening? Yeah, that's right. You're right. Well, well, I can't remember what I was arguing about. Or kind of about um, so we're, we're spreading out, and while that that's pretty neat, we still I go into places and nobody's heard of us. And that's the only, my only goal is to make sure the school systems know that we're a tool. We're a tool that they can use for that kid who who needs a little help. The, uh, on the back of there, it shows how many kids from other county, according to Department of Education. That's the, how many <coughs> we graduate. Those are the kids we want. We want to help those kids. Uh, the mentor program, uh, you know, the, the mentor must be 23 or older, same gender, live nearby. Uh, and that's it. That's it. I, I've got a, a, a News Channel 5 little short clip. If you want to get a picture of what the academy's about, I'll show you that, but I'll answer any questions. Talk to me about that mentor piece again a little bit. You said that's the most important part. Well, it is because, like? you know, when, when the kid graduates from 22 weeks, he goes home. He goes back to the neighborhood and back to the whatever, whatever caused him to come to us. So we want somebody there to keep him on track. Um, you know, that mentor is there. We've had mentors who quit, worst case. We've had mentors who, who brought the fancy kid with or to their home. It, it wasn't a requirement. Is there a monitoring or accountability piece where you make sure you track the, that relationship? Yes, sure the, the mentor is required to call us. I think it, uh, I'll find it said there. Uh, or, or, well, they have to report back to us and, and tell us how the kid's doing. Because we have to report back to the national office saying all that money you invested in us, is we're changing some lives. How long is that phase two? Uh, one year. One year? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's tough, mm -hmm. and stats show mentors quit. So it's a right. we have a, a team called case managers, mm -hmm. about four of them who work for us, and that's their job is to reach out to the mentors and keep contact with them. Typically, how many uh, students do these mentors? One. Well, just one. One to one. So you one to one. Mm -hmm. Any hours, certain number of hours they have. To well, yes, sir. It's, it's four contacts a month. Gotcha. How often do they get face-to-face -face visits with the cadets? Pick mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time, about midway, is the mentor training, and that's and, and then we bring in the mentor training is the mentor and the cadet together. But we encourage the mentors to stop in because 
sometimes the mentor doesn't know the kid real well, and, and so if they can develop a relationship while they're in phase one, it helps in the phase two. On these counties, <clears throat> For instance, maybe all the counties, but for these top, like these top ten counties yes, on the back, how many of those the, the judges from those counties uh, give them that? Uh, okay, uh, I see. I know Shelby County is rough. We haven't made a lot of connections there. Davidson County uh, Magistrate Jennifer Wade was our guest speaker. She knows it. She talks about it. We we go to her truancy court. <coughs> The, the magistrate Wade and the school system have their own joint truancy court, and we go to it. She invites us into that. Um, Knox County, I spoke of, Brotherhood County. I think early on we met with the judge, and I have reached out to her. I haven't connected yet. But, um, Thank you. Hamilton County is, is Judge uh, mm -hmm. Phil Yaw. He, he, uh, I've got his cell phone number. He, if one of his kids acts up, he wants to talk to him. So. Uh, uh, Williamson County, not a lot of luck. Montgomery County is very supportive. We, have, we whenever the school counselors, the high school counselors get together, we come up and talk to them. But we're they, we're uh, not doing it yet, though, right, Rutherford County? Not, no, sir. You know, we, well, let me just go on record. We want to. But I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, have you got a business card? Yes, sir. I've got some. Okay. Okay. I'll give you one. And the school counselors are the one who knows the kids. Absolutely. And that's where we got. That's where I got to talk to those school counselors. Um, you know. We'll, we'll we'll drive down and, and I was in I was in Coppertown. Who knows where Coppertown? That town is. I was there last week talking to a kid. Uh, so it's, we're we're making we're we're getting out there. We're getting out there. Uh, we we go to the school systems and we go to the judges. And, and I tell the judges, I you know, sir, ma'am, uh, I don't want your I don't want the violent kids. That's not what we're about. Uh, we have a hands-off policy. We don't let the kids touch us, and we don't touch the kids. Um, I'm, I have fired staff members who, on video, touch the kid, you know, push the kid back. And that's, that's not what we're about. Uh, DCS is a, a, a good friend now that's an investigator. I know her well, and she, you know, hey, I've got this issue. I'm going to let you know about it. And, uh, but, but that's on the, on the same note. The kids don't touch us. Any questions? Just one comment, <clears throat> Madam Chairman. I first met Gary uh, just last month, I guess it was, at, at the retirement uh, uh, barbecue for mm -hmm. General Haston. General Haston was our adjutant general for the state of Tennessee, and the incoming general to replace him the next morning was changing the, uh, the uh, I guess, rank or yeah, the command, the command, change command, change of command uh, with General Jeff Holmes. So General Holmes is a Rutherford County and from Las Casas. Uh, so he's our new two-star general that, that mm -hmm. uh, commands that, and, and we set the same table with Gary, and, and he was telling me about this program, and I said, uh, uh, please come down, and, and you know, I, I, and I was encouraged by General Holmes for our county to get engaged, you know, because uh, not that they control Gary and mm -hmm. the school, but but they're uh, they're very proud that there is a connection with mm -hmm. the, with our military. I'm done. If, if you have two or three minutes, I'll show you that Channel 5 out of Nashville did a, a little video. That's, that's up to you. Yep, let's see it. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can have some morning PT. Hey, Get it right okay. Yeah, you can marry. You just talk us through it. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's okay. a typical morning. All the kids are out. Looks like Marine Corps. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a pr like a jail setting or anything. Do they do, so Sorry, students, do they like uh, responsible for cleaning? Yes, they, they wash their own clothes. They wa we, there was washer and dryers in the barracks. That girl <laughs> they interviewed, uh, she, what a neat story. She, she is now down in Winchester at, what's the community college down there? Buffalo State, uh, uh, take, in nursing school. Oh, wow. uh, she, uh, her story was, and, and it's neat, she, she went back to high school. She, she didn't graduate with a diploma. 
she went back to high school to finish up and, and she said, I gotta get away from high school. So we, we got a HACCP testing center. So she came back, took the HACCP with us <coughs> after, after she left our program and, and now she's in my love. So we're, when the kid leaves us after 22 weeks, we still work with them. Where's your school located? Okay. It's uh, Brawley Parkway North. Uh, it's the old Woodland Hills Youth Prison. So we went in and, and all the cells, we took out the locks, those are now bathrooms. Uh, it, it has a prison feel to it sometimes, but it, you know, it's not. You can see the computers on the side of the wall, and there's the barracks where they live. What does their graduation ceremony look like? Do you do something? Sure, at the National Guard headquarters in Nashville. Uh, We've, we've had the governor. The governor was our first. Set go drive. Yes, sir. The governor was our first guest speaker. Uh, Magistrate Jennifer Wade. You know, she, she's juvenile court magistrate under Judge Calloway, the juvenile judge here. Um, and then we had Tim Irwin from Knoxville. And then now I don't know who's going to be next. Um, that is it. Very cool. I wish down at the bottom right is the speaker button. I, I, I did that. No. It, it, it didn't do anything. They not set up for speaker. They didn't set up for a yes. sound right. tonight. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank y'all. I do appreciate it. And, you know, it's, it's just trying to get people some kids that are in the program to get them in the Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, very well. We've got Miss Garrett. If you want to come up, we'll be in the health department next. Good evening. How are you? Good. Okay. Um, first, I have my monthly March report to present to you guys, and um, our numbers are right on board. We continue to keep increasing back to our pre-electronic medical record numbers. Um, we've done some, a couple more of those poverty simulations that we talked about. We're continuing a, a large English as a second language. Uh, literacy class in our Smyrna site and it's gotten so big we're in like three classrooms now so very popular um, initiative that we're doing there. You, have you seen any sign of measles? Uh, no, we, we have not. Um, we are on special alert. Um, we do all kinds of notification to every provider in Rutherford County. Uh, hospitals, what to look for and what to see and, and how to report and what precautionary me message uh, was a to take. a report on one of the news channels last night, I think it was ABC, that indicated a certain age bracket, which I fit into, uh, although we had measles vaccination, vaccinations years and years ago, are at risk because it may have worn off and there are tests that can be done. Do you, do you have the ability to do those tests? Um, no, not at this point, we do not. But um, any of your private doctors could order that for you, could order that test for you. Okay. So, um, so it is but something. you could just come and get the vaccination as well if you don't want to do the blood test and just get a, uh, a booster of the vaccination. And uh, is, is that, we could do that here, yeah, is exactly. Is that what you're advising? Well, you can do either. Either is appropriate measure. So, is there, there's no downside to getting the booster? No, none at all. There's none. Um, it, with one uh, live MMR vaccination, uh, you have 93% um, coverage against the disease. Um, and so that's why in around the 80s, they started recommending a second. Um, and the second gets you to about 97 to 99% um, coverage. So, um, but then there were some that are in a, a certain window of ages, and I think it's born 1959 to 64. I have to double check that. Um, had may have not had live MMR virus. They may have had a 
um, dead MMR virus, which was the recommended at that time, and it doesn't last as long, the immunity. So there may be waning of immunity, which is, is what you heard, probably. Is, is then, there a recommendation you have for ages, people who may need to be revaccinated? Yeah, I think if you uh, have concerns or questions, call either of our health departments and let us walk you through and see what would be the best option for you. I think that would be good. Or check with your private providers. We do have a emergency alerting system that we use for all medical providers and out goes out the current um, algorithm. What do we do if somebody ha says they have this or that and it tells every single uh, medical provider in our community what to do and how to handle it. And we've received two or three on um, measles uh, algorithms keeping us up to date on what to do. So I think it, that would probably be best because it's kind of more individualistic. Um, and if you don't know your immunization history and you were in Tennessee is where you got your vaccinations, we might be able to look it up or give you numbers of where you can go to look it up. So thank you for that question. It's a good question. I assume if you had the measles, Yes, um, they do say that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, not weaning factor. Yes, yes, yeah. If you had the measles, it's pretty good. Right, right. Anything unusual on the report? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Move to approve the report. Senator. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And I have just a couple of extra little things that. Um, one is this um, government grant contract. This was just received this today, and I, I took it to Lisa um, built Nolan. Yes, the built environment grant. And this is a, um, we did this last year, so some of you may remember, the state gave us $10,000 last year to build some kind of healthy environment item. And uh, what we decided as a health department and wellness council uh, were to continue help funding these walking tracks that are at the schools and are open for um, the public. We have a cross-use agreement, so they're open. And so it really helps that community because we have schools now in just about every uh, community are getting close to being there. And so this year, last year they gave us 10, this year they've given us $20,000. And um, Ms. Nolan will transfer that to the school when we do get the funds and uh, the school will build in Laverne Primary is where we've discovered is the biggest need right now. They do a assessment based on uh, what schools have gotten them and what schools haven't. And for $20,000, we can build the entire track for a primary school. Okay. So, and so I need to um, have the contract go through so that we can get the money. So moved. Second. All in favor? Do we need to represent this money? Uh, <coughs> it's just a contract, just a but I'll do it either way. We have, have we been awarded the money yet? No. Money? So no. This, we're just applying for it? Uh, well, we've yes, we've been awarded the money, but we haven't gotten any money yet. Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like they've sent us a thing saying we are going to yeah, give you this yeah. money, but we don't actually have the money yet. We'll just play it safe. Okay. Cook? Yes. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Okay. And then the last thing I have is a budget amendment where I, um, I've been working with Brian in, in our, with our IT department to try to figure out our phone uh, system issues that we're having. Um, so we're kind of an oddity, as you guys know. We're state and county. We're not really on the county's phone system. We're not really on the state's phone system. We kind of have our own, and it's been increasingly getting more expensive. So um, Brian and I are going to meet in the uh, next week or so, and we're going to try to figure out how we can make the health department officially part of the county, and it'll get us a little bit less cost. Um, which is something we've been working on because our system we currently have right now is at the point where it's not supported any longer by black box or by anybody. So when you call and say, hey, this is wrong, they're, or it's not working, they're like, well, the system's out of date. You know, we'll try to band-aid it, but it's not really working. So um, 
and once I get and meet with Brian and we figure out how to get the wires and all that, I feel sure that the state will pay to transfer us over to that system. And I think that will help take care of this slowly increasing uh, phone bill that we keep having. Right. It'll be more, uh, but for right now, for this year, we're going to be a little shy on money in the phone bill line. So I need to move around some stuff from some of the other line items. But you did to get find that it was, covered. You found it within your budget? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. You want to increase communications by five and the other four accounts accordingly? Is that all you want yeah, to Yeah, take those down and, and increase by 5,000, yes. Term, and those other accounts are going to be okay? Yes, I, I looked at them all today and it, it, we should be perfectly fine in those, I think. Move to approve the request, Madam Chair. Okay. Second. Roll call. No? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Mr. Irvin? Yes. Mr. Gammon? Yes. Mr. Gurley? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Aye. Mr. Allen? Yes. Thank you guys. Appreciate your support. And then just to remind you, we're yes. doing our joint meeting with budget um, at the Board of Education next month. Okay. So you do not need to be there unless you have something for us. Right. And thank you for that. Appreciate and of course, it. I'll put you in the very front page if you need to. Okay, if I need to. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, Mayor, you were going to share some things with us on community care? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Very quickly, yeah, three things on community care, Madam Chairman. Uh, members, Christy Houston, we haven't found out. I think there was a second uh, vote. They have to, when they appropriate funds, they have to go back for the second month to vote a second time. For the request that, uh, um, Commissioner Cook and I sit on that board, and so we haven't heard the latest of the request. We had requested, uh, I think the, the total renovation of the oldest section of the nursing home was going to be about nine hundred and some fifty thousand dollars, and we'd requested half of that, and then we were going to we have money in the fund to fund the other half. So we're just waiting to hear from that. <coughs> Hopefully, uh, uh, we made a good presentation, and we can get that underway. Unfortunately, we also learned at the last meeting that uh, our roof is in very poor condition uh, on the nursing home, and unfortunately, the uh, uh, county owns the building. So we're probably looking at about 200,000. Ben went out there, uh, Madkin, met with the roofing company that uh, we do business with, and they estimated around 200,000. I think we're okay until the next budget. So we were working on budgets today. We'll go ahead and, and put that request in for the next budget. Is that an asphalt so, roof? Uh, roof? Yeah, it's a it's a modified bitumen uh, roof for this <coughs> replace it with the same thing. I, you know, I, I think we need to look at alternatives before we spend that money, you know. Care if we put a pitched roof on it, you know, something that because those flat roofs just don't work anymore. I think schools have found that out over the years that uh, I remember coming out to your school back before you became principal on Thanksgiving and, and hit 55 gallon drums. And we talked about that last night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Very right. conversation. Yeah. Uh, catching, uh, mm -hmm. catching the water was coming in right by the trophy case, you know, yeah. I was going, oh my gosh, these flat roofs were just crazy buzz back in the 90s, but uh, we need to do something uh, uh, newer technology, I think. Going to look at that. Yes, we are. Thank you. And the, the last thing I may have reported, and you've heard about this case, um, the gentleman who was at the sheriff's department, he was arrested on some drug charges, and then he went from the from uh, the jail out to the uh, correctional work center. The first day we had him at the correctional work center, he collapsed, um, and then so Dr. Rudd ordered him back to the jail after he collapsed, and his. Uh, progress was uh, digressing and so they took him over here to the hospital in St. Thomas and then so since October 30th of, of 18 he was uh, at Centennial in Nashville up until uh, we realized he was diagnosed with meningitis um, and it was the same type of meningitis that was uh, uh, the strain, we had to send him to Centennial because they didn't have the equipment to do the lab work to find out what type of strain of meningitis it was. It was the same type that was from the uh, 
Remember the pain clinic up in Boston and they were sending Continuing shots down shots here for the yeah. shots in the back and it was that same type of strain. And basically he was paralyzed from the waist down and so I talked with Dr. Rudd. We were, I said, if, if you know, he said, I'm not sure he'll ever uh, progress from this point forward. We, so he was paralyzed from the waist down. I said, well, if we're gonna have to pay that bill, I'd rather have him at our community uh, nursing home the county's nursing home as opposed to somewhere else like Adams Place, a much higher rate. <clears throat> so we were able to get him out to um, uh, community care and uh, Terry and, and uh, the physical therapist have been working with him. He's up now, he's not totally ambulatory, but he's in a wheelchair and uh, so he's functioning and uh, hopefully we'll uh, be able to get him back home. So we've got him out of uh, community care um, we're working out a deal because the nursing home owed the county some money, so we're actually going to try to go back to 10 care and try to get money from 10 care to reimburse because he probably should have been a 10 care patient. Mm -hmm. But uh, he'll have to continue serving out his sentence, not at, at the correctional workhouse, but back at the jail. And then he'll be free to go back home. Excellent. And the report. Excellent. Thank you so much. Motion to approve the report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you want me, did you get my email late this afternoon? No. I totally changed the report I sent, nope. sent to y'all. Yeah, apparently I was still in March. Okay. So, it's totally different from what I sent y'all. <laughs> But if you have any questions, you can ask me, but that's basically all I did. Any updates from last month's report? Any at all? No. Nothing to look at. No, we just <laughs> wrote the report. Anybody have questions, Ms. Jelly? I'll second. We need a motion. I'll entertain a motion. Aye. Did you make it? No. Okay. Yes, Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thanks, Julie. Right. School board. Come on up. Your turn. $60,000 raise. Oh, no one ever asked for a $60,000 raise, or no one's ever offered me one. So we got that out of the way. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to turn it down. Yes, <laughs> I would turn it down. Okay. All right. We've got two uh, things here. We, of course, we've got the uh, entire budget here, and we also have a summary of the budget. I can go through each one of these. Um, these functions along with these uh, these codes and, and kind of go over those and, and, and answer any questions you may have and I may add some things to it. If we start with uh, function 71100, the regular education program, elementary and secondary, you'll notice that uh, first thing is the position increase of 105.5 uh, teachers. Uh, this would also include the opening of those two schools, which are approximately about 50% of that 105.5. Mr. Sparlock, can mm -hmm. you tell me what page you're on? Yeah, the first page on the one. The one, one. Right here? Yeah, the big one. One of 30. One of 30. One with a small black. Yeah. Yeah, unclipped here. One of 30. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. All right. We all want who we need to be. Okay. All right. Well, can I just say yeah. one thing so the new commissioner knows? Mm -hmm. Um, at this meeting, the school board goes over, just uh, gives us an overview mm -hmm. of the budget and kind of what to expect. Next month, and I'll, I'll announce it again at the end of the meeting, we have a joint meeting at central office, and that is um, with the budget committee, 
Health and Education Committee, and school board members. And that's where we have a very thorough, detailed analysis, and we really dive deep on the numbers. So this is your month to take your time, look at the numbers so that you're not surprised by it. Right. When we meet next month, although all those people are present, it is a Health and Education Committee meeting. And so we're the only ones who vote. Anybody can ask questions, anybody can participate in discussion, but it is a Health and Ed meeting, and we will be the only ones who vote, and we'll decide to advance onto whatever we advance onto budget. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I assume as last year that uh, for new members on here that if we have specific qu budget questions between now and the next meeting, we'll send them either to Mr. Spurlock or send them to Mr. Sandovich kind of going over that uh, the the object code 116 the number of uh, regular ed teachers there the increase number includes approximately 52 of them will be uh, uh, added on to the Rockville and Rocky Fork Elementary uh, the other ones would include uh, growth uh, you know for those of you that are new uh, commissioners uh, Here's how the uh, requirements are as far as grade bands are concerned. You know, we're adding over a thousand kids each year, but the, it's a, it's a funny thing. They don't all come in third grade. They don't all come in ninth grade. They come in at different grades. And and for uh, for purposes of our how uh, what we work around K through three, uh, the overall average has to be at 20. Now, there could be some classes with a little bit over 20, but there better be some classes that are below 20 in order to get to that average. That's state mandated. Uh, grades four through six, the maximum average across the school band is 25. And once again, you can, you, know, you can have lower ones, you can have higher ones, but you better uh, match the 25. Uh, uh, seven through 12 is 30. That's the max average. You can have 35, but you're going to have some lower. And usually, we can do a better job in high schools because of specialty courses like that. You and said, then you said you better match. That, that's average. That's right. That's average. You got to have that average across the whole school. And we usually, like I said, the high schools are easier due to the fact that you know an AP uh, chemistry class is not going to have 30 in it. You know, and so it's it's pretty easier that way. Uh, CTE is another one of those. 20 is the average. You could technically have 25 in one class, but the overall average has to be uh, at 25. So that's where that comes from. Also included in this are our raises, our proposed raises for the teachers and things of that nature. Can you tell us a percentage? Yeah, uh, right now it's 5%. On top of the 3.5? No, it's, a two, it's 2 2.5 on top of the 2.5. Okay. What is the percentage? Of, how much of that is coming from the state, or do we know yet? Well, the 2.5 percent that's coming from state is probably about 60 percent. The 2.5, the additional 2.5 would not be come. We would not be getting that. That would come from local. Okay. Um, and of course, you can go on down, and, and, and uh, you can see the EAs is in part of this. And this would also include our ESL population. And once again, EAs, are, we, we add those according to the size of the, of the classes. And then ROTC, there's one there uh, that's being proposed to add it uh, to making the count, the total count that we would have uh, if this is funded to 20. And then on down are some of the uh, uh, labor information, the Social Security, so forth, fringe benefits. And, and below that are, are some of the uh, uh, the substitutes the, the, for non-certified and certified. Uh, and then, Jeff, you can jump in here on other contracted agencies. That I'm assuming this would be stuff that would go outside of what we right. uh, what we currently yes. serve the, our kids the, with. The placements that are required for regular ed kids outside of our schools under various aspects of the education. Mm -hmm. Jeff, schools. I got a question, and this is I just need to know. When we start this new school in Rockville, counting the janitor, everybody, administration, teachers, and all, what is the number on that? Five million four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Averages. Mm. But I'm looking at three something. Well, yes. It's how much? It's Jeff, over, been it's over five million. Five million four hundred seventy-five thousand. Mm. And you pretty much hit that one. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, the little, elementary. You're a little off. But no the elementary much. came in at a million six seventy-six. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Now, does that include also this 2.5? Not the newest 2.5. So, so it would it actually go up. The budget or operating salary, excuse me, Greg, is this five point something for a high school now? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and that includes all of our other high schools. Well, so if, if, it, if it costs us five for the new high school, will it cost us five for all the other high schools? Well, all the other high schools at least have that amount of staffing mm -hmm. with your comprehensives. Yes, or they, well, they would it, have more. Well, probably more. Oh, they have more. Yeah. You'd have more. Yeah. Because what, what we do, and this is what I've been telling Mr. Spurlock mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Zago, one of the things that is crucial when we open a new school is how many positions are we able to transfer. That's the part that is much mm -hmm. harder with a high school mm -hmm. because of all the specialized, specialized classes. Right. But we came in right personnel-wise where we had projected for mm -hmm. Stewart's Creek High mm -hmm. and Siegel High, <clears throat> right, in, right in that range mm -hmm. for, for number of new positions. That's not all local dollars, though. So that's not all, no, no, ma'am. So, but you, because you get revenue per student for the right. state. We get the revenue per student, but it lags a year behind. Okay. It lags a year so behind. So we front the first year. Right. And we get nothing for the administrative school-wide positions right. in the first year that we have a school on the <laughs> That's correct. Principal, assistants, uh, principal, guidance counselor, librarians. Mm -hmm. Clerical staff, nothing in the DEP right. file. That's at, right. at all or just first year? For the first right, year. First year. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that, so that first page here, you notice that it's a total of uh, position increase of 109.9. That would include the, the regular ed teachers along with the ROTC and the EAs. Okay. Next is our alternative instruction. These would include our, our uh, all of our alternative schools that we have. Uh, I'm assuming this is Daniel McKee, uh, Smyrna, and Smyrna West. Smyrna West yeah. uh, there's no increase in positions. However, you'll notice the 5.5% the, the increase on the, uh, the teachers. That is not only the 2.5 and the additional 2.5, but it includes step raises in there. You know, have they gone from uh, zero to five to whatever, you know, yeah. increase the step raises there. And of course, I think you may have mentioned life insurance, how well that, yeah, that we, we got a real bargain of a bid two years ago. The company realized how much money they were losing on it, and Miss Miller was all right with going. It, it's about nearly 10% less than our previous vendor, but they, didn't price the product well, so that's why that's why we've got the insurance increase across. You'll see that across all the budgets when you're looking at budget to actual for, for life insurance. There was an increase. I, I'm looking over here. The uh, EAs there was a 3.8 uh, increase there. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. No, no, that's change not. On no change. Okay. No change on all right. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, um, the next one is special ed. Now, I want to just kind of give you a little history of where we are on special ed. You know, our biggest youth, uh, our largest population of special ed is, uh, is designated um, learning disabled, uh, you know, which can run the gamut of anything. You know, I mean, you know, it could be more pronounced or more severe than others. Uh, but we're seeing a, an, an uptick in uh, emotionally disturbed. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, one, maybe last week, our coordinator had uh, did a presentation for the board, and uh, we're seeing some violent behavior in elementary schools. You know, uh, I've got a, a few things here, you know, for example, uh, kicking, biting, stabbing, the pencil and stuff. And we've done everything from the following and this is from uh, this was up to, to, to March of this year we had 1700 and 1706 incidents uh, district-wide where we had to clear the classroom where the student was in okay we had 665 of them which which required calling in the de-escalation team incidents okay we had uh, 1144 of them where we had some kind of impact on the instructional practice that's taking place in the class. So I say all this because uh, 
what we're requesting here in terms of additional personnel, we're trying to maintain a safe, orderly environment that's conducive to learning. At the same time, making sure we're following the, I, the federal IEP, which is a contract, and not violating the, uh, the fidelity of that. Also, so it's it's a it's a task. Uh, one of the things that we looked at, I think it was over ten thousand dollars in in OJI claims due to this this these injuries, you know, in the past year or so. So when you see the uh, the number of uh, increases there as far as the 13 and a half uh, positions uh, for teachers, of course also the teachers as we increase our special special ed population, they have not only do they have caseloads that they have to take care of. And it's not for it's not uh, it was not unusual for a high school, a comprehensive high school, for a special ed teacher to have up to 25 to 30 on their caseload at the same time, having to teach classes too. Mm -hmm. So you know that that's some of the things that we face in that area. And, Ms. Sprague, and you got 500 teachers that you're looking for, right? For 2019. Positions 500.9. Uh, uh, which which, which I'm page you on? Yeah. I'm on three of 30. Special ed program. Okay, I I, I, I I don't know where you got that. Labor total. Okay, our our total, total. Those are the total that is our existing positions and new positions right. we are new asking. Okay, for. I got that. What is and how many students? It's totally, is 28.3 yeah. that we're requesting there. Yeah. We're talking about 13.5 special ed teachers. 12.8 uh, EA special ed, uh, two speech and language positions, and that's a total of increase uh, from the from this year of 28.3. So that's where you get the 500.9. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I'm, how many students is is that cover? Well, it, because it, I know you have some special one -on ed is, right? there is yeah special ed is uh, no, well you don't have one on one teachers. You have a one on one ancillary uh, EAs. Ancillary, yeah, as you that will would have. Be in this, right, yes, right? Sir. Okay, right. so my question is how many students do we have in special ed? 2,600 uh, or so. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 key the intensity of their right. disability drives our staffing levels. Typically, in a special ed class, you got uh, anywhere oh, from oh, somewhere oh, from 10 oh, to 12. Oh, Pre K, yeah. mm -hmm. three, four year olds through right. 21 year olds. 21. Mm -hmm. Does you, you get into, you, you almost mentioned the dangerous situation right. with, with violence. Right. Uh, does, does, the, does the. Here's a breakdown right here. So, this officer do anything? Really? They can't, all they can do is avoid anyone else yeah. getting harmed. You know they can they can and they are trained in and we we have our people trained in uh, in our, our restraint. They have to be certified in that. They, they can't call the parent in and talk to. Oh, the parent. definitely. The parents uh, are definitely called in. But let me give you a breakdown. We had 1,739 uh, uh, learning disabled, 339 intellectual disability, uh, 262 language impairment, 141 emotional disturbance. Uh, 583 autism, 610 uh, other health impairments. Now, let me say this also as I'm going through here. Sometimes they can be dual certified, and a lot of times they are dual certified. You know, they may have, uh, they may be, uh, you know, emotionally disturbed and, and some other health impaired. You know, so it, it's 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 a small number when you look at it in the totality of how many students we have. But it's a it's a hands on it's a really highly intense uh, you know uh, the most litigious area of uh, public education is special ed it has been and it will continue to be we we had for uh, some of y'all have been on with this committee a bit longer we had three years I believe where our legal bills cost mm -hmm. half a million dollars a year the last this year and last year our levels drop back more what more what we've seen but it is we have people coming from systems where they are used to getting higher levels of service and uh, we have to be very careful mm -hmm. and we get challenged absolutely and we have to yeah mm -hmm. what age group what what area is most of special ed 
middle schools. Oh, it's all it's the all, it's all the gamut. It's spread out. Mm -hmm. You yeah. said the lower age. Usually, though, three or four year olds, year olds yeah. up to okay. 21. Right. We and also get to actually deal with get the, the transition home after after yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You had five hundred thousand dollars of litigation for all your fees. This was a few years back. Okay. Not all of that was special ed, but normally we're in the two hundred and mm -hmm. two hundred and fifty thousand dollar range on the high end. We would cross in half a million. It, it's it can get be yeah. it can get to be pretty yeah uh, pretty high. Yeah. You know, in educational assistance, that's another uh, area. We know we're growing in it. Uh, a lot of times, uh, what we run into is uh, a student will come from the outside, you know, come in, transfer into our system, and the IEP states in the IEP that they need an ancillary EA, you know. And then we can, we can go, now that's a document, we can go in there and reconvene an IEP and try to show ways that we can, uh, uh, you know, circumvent that, that need. But if those parents are, if they're, yeah, if they're savvy, they can, put, they can hold our feet to the fire. We have nothing that we can do about it. Yeah, there are advocacy, advocacy, advocacy groups, groups right. that are uh, getting more and more active in the Middle Tennessee area. Mm -hmm. okay. on, on this page, line 312, about halfway down, mm -hmm. those are contracts for a really hard to handle mm -hmm. students that we we have, uh, yeah. Uh, through, once the uh, once they're you know there's issues that they rise above what yeah. we can offer. Yeah. Uh, that's the yeah. the bond. That's that's when we have to make a decision. Yeah. And in that you mean like place them somewhere else. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. like yeah. Genesis here in town. Right. Yeah. How many of those students do we have? I would have to. I'd have to look. Look at so the billing. It, that number does vary. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't remember. So <clears throat> let me try to understand. And I apologize because I don't know. And I ask questions because I want to know. Mm -hmm. But what constitutes this kind of kid? I mean, is he? Is this like, you know, danger to us? Danger to our teachers? Is it? Well, one of the things usually on the older kids, by that time, one or two things has happened to them. They've already, uh, you know, they've exited out of it, or they're 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 not going to stay around long because there there's also repercussions that occur outside the school. So we don't have that. We don't have it as much in high schools. When we have it in high schools is when we have, in which we do now have when we have people migrating from the uh, you know northwest and coming into our county and that's when we re that's that's when we really get ours because by the time they go through our system one or two things happen we've 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 re redirected this behavior and, and provided support for them to, to be successful and, and they go on with support and they're very successful but when, once they come into us at a certain age you know it's, it's problematic. Now, what we're seeing more so now is at the early age, the elementary age, you know, yeah. where we're seeing this. Yeah. And is this where, like, if you had to send a child to, like, the School for the Blind, or is, that, is this where that would be, too, or is that a different school category? School for the Blind registers as a separate That's a state. School. It's like the, okay. they're yeah. a state school. Yeah. yeah. They're their own district or state. Yeah. But as we, as I this tends to be Genesis, All right. Rutherford Academy. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it, mm -hmm. generally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're Genesis and Rutherford County. You're, you're, limited, limited. you're limited to a lot of You're very limited. Contract. Right. Right. Yes. There's not many yeah, there are around many here. to be specialized in that type. We, we have had the discussion. What would it take to open our own right. school like that? Do internally. We don't think we could do it. No, no not for that. Yeah. Or we'd have a rotate. You think this yeah. gentleman has a rotation of faculty <laughs> members? Yeah. 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 So we would really have some. Yeah. The the, the pace four. There, it gives you the total 28.3 20, positions Mr. there. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Burley, uh, Jeff, let me ask a question on Genesis, because uh, how much of that money is following that BEP money that's following most of those areas? Genesis? I'm sorry? How, how much BEP money do we get yeah. toward those? It's mm -hmm. not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how much out of this budget is following those kids? Cause 
last year when I brought the bill, mm -hmm. because Genesis has a location in Clarksville right. also, and so the the BEP money wasn't following the kids mm -hmm. and the governor well, has on when we well, take we it pay, you, we pay, we follow, contract that. Does it follow These are still our students. students. Okay. It's still our students, but we yes. have to pay, you know, yeah. and it's, it's yeah. we're, we're not getting the full right. BEP funding for because we have to, well, yeah. of course, we okay. have to spend that. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and before the bill was passed, they well, were still your students because they got kicked yes, out? Yes, they were still our students. students. Now, one of the groups impacted that you may be referring to is the, the some of the children who are in juvenile detention right. over certain mm -hmm. points. Now that BEP money follows. follows. That that was the yeah, that's the, that was the hell. Yeah. A, we don't have many in that program. Do we? we don't have a lot. No. Okay. We don't have that many kids right. out of Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Can, can, let me just try to absorb a little bit of this. There's there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, oh, there's a lot of stuff. Of course. And I know you're moving really really mm -hmm. fast, but if we kind of look at the bottom of the page mm -hmm. in each of these, right. these per total, mm -hmm. th that's the total dollars and the total percent of increase yes, that sir. you're looking for those the, categories. The first two columns, the first two columns show the, the budget in the, in the, the, for the next year. Right. The next year in the, the black position. numbers, dollars, the bluey purple mm -hmm. positions mm -hmm. in the next year's budget. The 1819, the next two columns, our current year budget, current year positions. I am, I got, had to pull off amendments last month, trying to get back into amendments. These numbers, my budget, I don't see huge shifts in my budget numbers, but those numbers will be changed. Right. The, then the fifth column of the numbers over the black is the budget increase in that line. Right. Followed by the percentage increase. Mm -hmm. Then the, the bluey purpley, that is the position increase in that line item. Then the percentage. Num numbers and percentage. Numbers and percentage. Okay. Right. That, that just the, as an example, we talked about early on so that some of us can mm -hmm. better understand what we're talking about. On that one of 30, that first page of yes. 30, mm -hmm. we're looking at an 8.2% increase. And of that 8.2% increase, how many of those are new Positions, the new positions that we're opening. Oh, about oh, half of those 50, positions. 2.5 or something like that. So yeah. we're looking at 4, 4.1% to open those schools. Yes. And that would bring this total down to 4% or so. Yeah. So, about, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those positions that we talked about early on, that 4.1 uh, looks to be half of the 8.2 right. that mm -hmm. relates to the new right. positions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when yeah. you're looking at, at actual real increases in these budget items, uh, you can take the, 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 new, you staff take the new staff that we need That's correct. away from this mm -hmm. and see that you're asking for mm -hmm. a 4.1% increase right. in those right. lines. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's an approximation of it, but it's right. it's pretty decent. Yes, I, I yeah. understand, yeah. And, and I know that every time I've ever looked at one of these, there's always changes the next month. Right, when you're right. To that. So mm -hmm. I know right. that, but it, it's yeah. just so I can better understand right. that, that's how I've kind of looked right. at it in right. the past, that 8.2% mm -hmm. is more like a 4% right. because of requirements for opening. Right, opening right, opening. that's yeah. correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Down the um, alternative special ed, uh, criminal career and technical. Career and technical. Okay. okay. Uh, page five. Page five. All right. Career and technical education. Uh, you'll notice there too that we've got a uh, in, in the column air position increase. Uh, it says 16. Uh, actually, these 16. All are at Rockville. Essentially. Just about, I mean, yeah, not many, I think maybe two were built yeah, in. Yeah. So 14 of these 16 are actually going yeah. to Rockville. This is nearly all Rockville. Mm -hmm. These are all, once again, the new school. New school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This is one. There, we weren't able to transfer as many CTE right. positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, let's see. So, once again, to, to take that down to the bottom line, right. we can take that 9% away from the 17% and you have a, a more realistic right, that's of right. what the actual right. increase to that looks like. That's correct. Right. Yeah. And this is an area, when I do my amendments, we will see some shift. Yeah. These teachers, each year, many of them are split. Some of the classes they teach at regular ed, some are CTE. Mm -hmm. Well, this is based on where they were last a year ago in the winter. Right. So there when I'm doing my amendments, you'll see some changes yeah. in between regular ed and CTE. One of the things that we try to do in, in, in our career technical education courses, we there are some classes that they can teach that are in CTE but are not part of our pathway study. One that jumps out at me is a requirement is personal finance. Uh, in personal finance, a, um, uh, a CTE instructor that has a, um, uh, a some type of a, a business marketing uh, type degree can teach that. But because we don't, it's not, not only is it not in our pathway or our programs of study, but we can teach more of those in a regular uh, social studies class. So we eliminate those classes because that, that could impact us. Whereas we can only teach 20 in uh, a CTE class, we can teach 30 in, in one of our social studies classes. And, and of course, personal finance is a required thing. And, and in this function, we do have mm -hmm. some increases in right. the non-labor right. because mm -hmm. of because of uh, the, uh, the new schools. Once again, going back to the new schools, uh, one, uh, the, the uh, object code 448, I mean, I mean, it's not much, but it looks like a 300,000, a 300% increase. That's where we're, in, where we're, we're adding, Rock, bringing Rock Bell on board, and some of these materials that they use within their classroom uh, is gonna increase what we need overall, and that's for everybody, of course, but it does have somewhat of an impact. But this function did have, because of doing things like that, mm -hmm. a healthy increase in the non labor mm -hmm. amounts, but it's to accomplish the programs that right. have been set for that. Is this an adoption year for any textbooks? Oh, of course. Oh, it is. It is. Uh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember what, what. Because the dollar amount didn't change that much, I didn't I, I itemize it on the year. I what we, we adopted. I, was it? We wouldn't have. We adopted that. Yeah. Uh, maybe ELA. Might have been I ELA. think it may be ELA mm -hmm. because and we have world languages in this right. year, and I think mm -hmm. ELA is some mm -hmm. English, right. English language arts. Mm -hmm. well, and is it in that 449? Because that's textbooks found in that one. Is it under CTE? That's still right. We have up. separate CTE yeah, textbooks. CTE. Textbooks. Pay, we have eight mil on page one of 38.2 million, yeah. which that's is right. now 200,000 mm -hmm. from okay. the current year. Right? Mm -hmm. Textbook. Explain 499 to me. 499? Mm -hmm. yeah. That, a lot of that, we have two categories for. We get, we have to follow the chart of accounts as interpreted by the State Department of Education. That's one of the requirements under the private act. As a, as a school system, we have to follow that. So there are some of the, some of our other materials and supplies are small equipment. Mm -hmm. Using non-perishable. Non-perishable, and perishable. Non -perishable, and perishable. But, but not big enough to be categorized as an equipment purchase. Right. We get, we're under different guidelines. Mm -hmm. So these, these are things we are using in implementing, teaching these classes that should be should last a while. Right. It's not just instructional materials and supplies, but it's one of the categories we have. You'll see that line item in almost yeah. all the county budget mm -hmm. yes. because it is a state requirement. Yeah. Right. Your 499 yeah. is a catch all thing. Right. And, and the feds give us capital. different requirements mm -hmm. right. than mm -hmm. the state does. So there's no there's no percentage change in 599, but what kinds of things fall into other other charges? You've probably told me before. Which means the first one, 599. Uh, uh, that is driver's ed. Mm -hmm. 
is the biggie on that one. And then we have some miscellaneous grant reimbursements, uh, TPAP, TPAP, TPAP programs and all like that. But we get various state grants that flow through that number two, but it's primarily driver's ed. And we do have a flow of money from the state that funds part of that. I have a question on page six. Okay. How did medical insurance go down on page six? It just depends on the enrollments of the people we happen to have on staff in that snapshot time frame last okay, year. Okay, so this is a snapshot of the particular people, that, the, how yes, they're enrolled, they could right. be an, in a, a smaller HSA function. Or, yeah, in a smaller function, you'll see and big we, swings. And we've seen that. We've yeah. seen a, a shift more toward the HRA. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, uh, of, yeah. of course, that's more of your millennials yeah. that's coming into education. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I just, it just caught yeah. my eye. Yeah. Can it be going down when it's in mm -hmm. general, yeah. it's going up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have someone who drops his or her dependent coverage mm -hmm. in a small yeah. apartment. So this, we're looking at a snapshot so of existing time. Absolutely position. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And because that's a smaller department, right. it shows yeah. up mm -hmm. larger. Exaggerates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exaggerates. Yes. Percentage of mm -hmm. I got one question. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's true. okay. Do we still have graduation assistants? Graduation coaches? Yeah. yeah, we do. Yes. Can you mm -hmm. tell me how many? We have one at each we side of the major high schools. We have, and I'm sorry, Mr. Spurlock. And we have split one. Split, split, split one at each one. of the alternative yeah. schools. So we just have one per high school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is Laverne the only one with a dedicated dual enrollment coordinator? Because I think he took a position. Actually, they use that. one of their uh, instructional coaches for that. Okay. They repurposed that for that, and that was paid out with some title money. Okay. Yeah. I just know we're trying to grow the one, mm -hmm. and I didn't know if that's anything we're. We're, we're, we're probably looking at looking at maybe doing a middle college and son and working on it. Do you want to mention yeah. that change? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you may have to catch me. I, I wrote it down here, but I don't know. It, it, it's the. Uh, the, the data conversion. Oh, okay. Yeah, system. okay. Yeah. yeah. Now I got it. You're talking about 399, right? Yes, sir. 399. All right. 399. This is, is this is the uh, migration uh, data. That's really what's going on. Um, the migration that w where we uh, amended the, the budget from the OJI right. done, mm -hmm. and we put it in here for yeah. for to do the migration. Yeah. This fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the reason we have that increase. A, a net increase over the previous year, the state may be dropping back on how much funding they apl up per apply to help offset the cost of our attendance system. So trying to be conservative, we want the higher number until we hear for sure. But that's been that's been discussed though. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Page seven of thirty. And this is our health services. This would include all of our. Is this a, uh, this is a OTs in in one eighty nine. One eighty nine. The OTs and the codas. You're right. Yeah. The OTs and the what? Occupational therapies and certified, certified occupational therapy assistants. assistants. There you go. One of my cousins. It's easy for you to say that. <laughs> yeah. And we had some discussion in this committee last year. Again, we have to use the chart of accounts. The state department of ed decides which accounts we should use. They don't give us one for OTs or CODAs. We have to lump them in other salaries and wages. Mm -hmm. So. We've, we've tried to keep the other account true for nurses. Right. Thinking that might be the most helpful approach. Mm -hmm. And this can be, this can fluctuate mm -hmm. uh, in the more mm -hmm. medically fragile kids okay. come into our system yes. and stuff like that. Yeah, and often what we have to do, I mean, you see we're adding two nurses this year. Often we will be bring an amendment forward. If we've got that metal, medically fragile kid mm -hmm. who comes in, we may have to hire a nurse Specific. that day mm -hmm. to that be child. with that child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, 
So is this 53 medical personnel? Those are all nurses. Is no, this? that's total. That's the, the total positions. That yeah. Position yeah. increase. So two. It was, it, we're this year it's 51. Position. How much is that? It was at Rockville. Well, essentially one at Rockville, one for Rockville. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the, those two nurses. So if if we have the kids come in, we will be adding to that by our mm -hmm. next year. Is that for the nurse in each school? Uh, we do have some who are shared because mm -hmm. we're big enough now with 49 schools mm -hmm. that we have to spend more time on administration. And, and currently in the BP formula, yes. it's uh, one yeah. to 3,000. Yeah. One nurse to 3,000. Yeah. Now, there there was a bill that was introduced. I don't know where it is. It may have probably got crashed somewhere, but to lower it to one to 500. Yeah. But uh, so we, uh, as a local, you pay uh, for your nurses. I mean, one to three thousand. We got forty-seven thousand kids. You can figure to do the math. What we're getting from BP. Yeah. There's a lot of students now that have to be intravenously fed right. or tube fed. Tube fed. And yeah. the teachers can't do it. It has to be done yeah. by a nurse. Mm -hmm. So where we were able to split nurses to mm -hmm. different yeah. schools, they're now dedicated right. to that school, which has increased our nurses. Mm -hmm. So if a child has a medical condition that requires a nurse, then we can't split that nurse between schools anymore. That's, That's right. So we have to hire one for the other place. And that's becoming more and more prominent. Mm -hmm. All the special ed situations that are going on are federally driven. It is. Of course. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, that, that one was driven by, uh, I think it was an Iowa mm -hmm. uh, court case back in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Well, number eight is number eight. All right, number eight of 30. Okay, other support. This is our. Uh, this is our. Um, uh, and this our student support system is our two. Uh, two supervisors and we, and our halftime athletic director. Have to half time yeah. athletic. And the dollar increase that you see here, is because, and I brought this amendment forward. We used to have safety and testing under the same person in the instruction department. Mm -hmm. He left in December. We were able, we, we combined testing and data. data so the, the other position got moved, but we had half a year in another page. This, the reason there's a $50 increase, we only had, had to cover half the year in this function. The other half the year is in another page. Oops, so what is the half time director? athletic director? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, well, it's what is a half-time athletic director? It's a, a person that needs to be full-time, <laughs> but we're only paying them half-time. So it's, that, yeah, it's an athletic director. Athletic he's director. He, yeah. he's, yes. Mm -hmm. He's all retired. Yes, yeah, some are retired. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, involved in retired. all the eligibility reports, yeah. mm -hmm. all uh, the Schedule. safety training, the scheduling from middle school. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's quite yeah. a task. Yes. What all is under this other student support? This, 72 130. What's all under there? Is it coaches? And no, it is not college? coaches, no. but it is our athletic, athletic director, director and safe school safety, safety, including our SROs right. are under here, mm -hmm. school counselors, our social workers. We have some guidance and mm -hmm. clerks in the, the high schools and the bigger middle schools. So, so we understand before you leave SROs, how are SROs in your budget? We have the SROs for the two alternative schools and for Holloway, those have stayed in our budget. Uh, Truman Jones did not think they qualified under the SRO program, and they, they were left in our budget when the SROs were moved to County General. Holloway? Holloway. And, and where? Daniel McKee and Smyrna West. West. Holloway's kind of an academic right. alternative mm -hmm. school. It's an academic program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I remember from the mm -hmm. safety meeting that we had, mm -hmm. um, when well, I mean, we were first talking about mm -hmm. doing a safety assessment and mm -hmm. a lot of changes, a big focus there was on mental health. It was. And so, and talking about increasing counselors right. and counselor availability that and all was, that. Is there, have you addressed that? Yeah, that, that was part, there? yeah, that's part of all, all of it. We're, we're, yeah. we're addressing as much as we, yeah. we, we, we can. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to ride a dead horse, but the, the SROs, are they employed through the sheriff's Through department? the sheriff's. I think we pay half the cost. Okay. And, and they have, 
deputy training just yes. like every mm -hmm. other one. Absolutely. And have police cars and mm -hmm. absolutely. So how many SROs to per thousand students? And like you got 1,300 at Blackman. How many SROs do you have? We got two SROs in every high school, yeah. one in every elementary, got, and one in every. Yeah. You got 2,300 uh, in Blackman right now. Well, maybe 2,300, yeah. 2,350 something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on a campus, um, in a campus situation, what mm -hmm. we're with a lot of what we're going to. There's four SROs on a campus. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All with cars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And if, if I may, in this function, again, this kind of catch-all function, we have we are requesting two more more trainers social workers and trainers. Okay. Right. Yes. And we've got White three line more out. trainers. White line out of social workers line one thirty. Okay. And then one eighty nine is the uh, trainers, right? The trainers. No new grad coaches. Our behavior specialists, mm -hmm. that's the big part of the increase. Mm -hmm. And you know, and later on, when you can, we, you know, you can go back, and, and this summary page here has all the object codes, and you can kind of, it gives it, yeah. kind of vets it out a little bit for you. On the trainers, you know, the athletic trainers, there was mm -hmm. some shift in the contractors, and then I watched one of your meetings. Yes. Something that yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're moving more to becoming our employees. Mm -hmm. Is the TOA not going to do that anymore? Well, it's we're still talking to them, and, and I think they will help us. Mm -hmm. I think there's, and, you know, there's, there's some opportunities of helping us. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but they'll fall under uh, our, yeah. our, as our employees. Yeah, yeah. It, it was also TOA and NHC, NHC. and NHC is pulling back mm -hmm. more than really? TOA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Page nine. Right, page nine. Okay, this is our curriculum department here. This is that five point two percent up there, mostly up in the first subtotal line, Jeff. Is that mostly new schools? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Media specialists, are they teachers? Yes, sir. Librarians. That's the librarians. Yeah. Why don't we call them librarians? Because that's Change what that they're back they're in 1970, <laughs> Commissioner. Yeah, they changed the name. <laughs> We've been media specialists. Yeah, yeah, they have to have a fancy name. And we don't have libraries anymore. The actual library yeah, where the books are kept are media, media centers. centers. Media so, centers now. Yeah. So no one can read it anymore. They made it difficult for us that we're of a certain age. They've changed the names mm. on us. <laughs> okay, the um, instructional computer personnel, that's our instructional tech coach at each one of the uh, like wow. Fork Elementary yes, and Rockville High School. The three media specialists, mm -hmm. two for Rockville High and one, one for, for Rockville, Rockville Rock and Fork Elementary. Elementary. Mm -hmm. Page 10 gives you the, the breakdown of how it impacts the budget and so forth. Yeah. Okay. There's not now. One good thing about it is, 
people that are my age and maybe a little bit younger than me, once they retire, it's getting lower, you know, as, as we go along. We don't have as many as we did used to have. Uh, I think they that's, that they stopped that, I want to say, in the late 90s maybe it was. Yeah. So as those people retire, you know, they just grandfather them out. And that is 100 the career ladder is 100 percent right. state. Right. The career ladder extended contract, we grandfathered, grandfathered. and mm -hmm. that state flow of money went away, but I think we had $22,000 right. last year. We use that for some of our uh, summer school and stuff like that. Is page 12 high school? Because you got page three in special ed. So special, special is ed. the next one, uh, page 12 and 30. You got special that education personnel? program? Is that personnel? Is that personnel? Because you got, you got special 30. education on page three. I wonder why it's different. Oh, this is, oh, per, this is the, the administration personnel. It has two categories. They have one that is. They're not, of course, entirely pure on this. Mm -hmm. One is more your in-school expenditures, and then one is more central office, mm -hmm. but it also includes people who are not special office, uh, special uh, central office. Uh, in this function, it, it is a little, yeah. our psychologists are out in the schools, right. but they work out, they're assigned out of the central office. Uh, but it, it's a, it's a requirement in our, our chart of accounts, the way the state reports it. This is personnel, I mean, administrative personnel. What you got is your director, uh, actually they're called coordinator. Coordinator of, of special ed. We had a change, and we do, that happened about the same time? Or, yes, sir. Yeah, so we had yeah. a change there in uh, our yeah. coordinator. Yeah. Uh, and that's where you want to see the, change, the difference there. The psychologist we were asking for. To, to, uh, okay. Again, part of that, the, the, the behavior and some of the mm -hmm. issues that Mr. Spurlock mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, that's one of the areas that we're, we're trying to mm -hmm. address some resources. There, there's a number of things that we do in our local school system that is not an absolute requirement by the state. Psychologist is one of them. No, they mm -hmm. pretty well, or yes. we pay for the service, right. or the give, contract give services. Give me an example of what the state does not require, but that we do. I don't know if there's anything that the state doesn't require that we do. I can't think of anything. Athletic directors? Well, uh, athletic director would be one of them. Yeah. That, that's one. Um, a, a, a safety person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we used some of We did have some of that. I used some of the safe school. Right. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, well, and we, that is how we are funding handling Mr. Crown mm -hmm. next year through the Safe Schools mm -hmm. Grant. So everything that's in there is state required. Mm -hmm. Everything that's right. It's that's not right. everything in the budget, but the, yeah. Uh, I, once again, I, I, I realized years ago we went above and beyond what the state. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. We, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm yeah. not knocking that, but, yeah. but there are some things in here that we do that the state does not require, totally require that we do. Well, point it out, Commissioner. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Uh, well, I'm are say, are, are those things in here? A, a lot of what we see is more on the RTI program. Right. Last year is the first year at mm -hmm. component. Is that about one? That's about one for 3,000 students. Yeah, I mean, that's it, 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 it's like your nurses. I mean, in state, a, we'd, yeah. only, we'd only hire, I would say, three, divided yeah. by, mm -hmm. into 47,000. We a lot yeah. less than we had yeah. 16. But we are accountable mm -hmm. for, the, the program was instituted mm -hmm. a few years before that, we are accountable for it. And are held, right. our held, feet are held to the fire. Mm -hmm. So we took care of an RTI program and we started getting a little state funding. The, the, the school psychologist is, is not just for, the, in this area, this is not just uh, let's talk and do ther therapy. Yeah. These are, te they do, they do testing. When a, when a kid has gone through uh, the uh, SAP, what we call the SAP report, where they do uh, some of observations and things like that, the school psychologist is the one who certifies them or deems that they they don't fall under the criteria for that specific handicap condition. Okay. I, I just was wondering, I, I can, yeah. my mind is not real clear. Right. I just remember years ago we added a number of things, and I want to say, let me just throw out art teachers. 
does do does the well, state require yes, that you have yes, art they teachers? Do, yes, yes. requirement. Yeah. But like I said, once again, it goes back yeah. to how they fund the play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So nurses would if we do put it by numbers, three thousand I just got yeah. okay. we would have about sixteen yeah. nurses. Absolutely. Yeah. We talked about that earlier this yeah. year. And, and, so and we've we got have, obviously more but than then that. those nurses would have to run here, there and yonder. Well, but yeah. then, but then it, where it gets squirrely, we go back to the student that requires a nurse right. at this school. Mm -hmm. Those numbers begin to creep up. Mm -hmm. So by mandate of the state, it's one per 30,000. But then you fall into the other category mm -hmm. of the, what the IEP or what that individual child needs, which kind of gets into that gray area. It's not really required by the state, but it's required by the mm -hmm. medical staff. So in that res so in right. that respect, we are beyond what the state mm -hmm. requires mm -hmm. for nurses, but based on the children and their disabilities, we're meeting what's required. Mm -hmm. and and that's kind of a complicated answer. We live in a much more litigious society than we grew up in. That, of course, directs some of our actions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But when you have a court case that rules that having a one-on-one -on -one nurse mm -hmm. is an acceptable accommodation of a, of a child, then his IEP had to state mm -hmm. that though. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Or his medical. Yeah. Or his right. medical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diagnosis. Yeah. And like I said, we we've seen a transition. I mean, I I don't I don't remember anyone being too fed when I was going through high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. But as principal of Oakland High School, I've I've actually seen at least eight or nine that was on tube feeding. Yeah. 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 What about? Uh, down syndrome, students and that, is that a one-on-one -on -one as well? Not necessarily. No. Depends no. on the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, goes back to personnel here again. Um, that looks like we're adding a half position. This is administrative, uh, this administrative position that's currently yes. half time at the di uh, district office and half time at Eagleville. Am I correct on that? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that, uh, in, that was brought about uh, through ESSA uh, was what's things called early post secondary opportunities. And not only is this position uh, dealing with those things, but they're also working with the individual schools getting their paperwork in because there are some, some, some things that they have to do. It's called competencies. They have to file with the State Department periodically throughout the year, making sure that, that that's been taken care of. And uh, uh, one other thing that they do is, is when, when we do our internships uh, with uh, industry, uh, they're responsible for making sure all that paperwork. So, so this is the only increase that, that I think we've, we've brought forward on that. Is that right on personnel? Yes. Sir. That have, have, and the numbers look a little weird on that, but it, it is basically a half-time position going to full-time at, at the central office because she, she was split with right. all the schools. But now that school will be split with Rockvale High. Mm -hmm. You do have a big bump on um, line 524 on that page mm -hmm. for in-service yes. staff development. Right. Was that kind yeah. of clue? For, for, well, within those categories, within those non-labor items, you see some uh, increases there. The, the travel has a $14,000 increase. That is, some of our programs require that Deca go to Deca events, uh, et cetera. The, the Chattanooga thing, the yeah. guys they call. We just they just went down there. Yeah, yeah. Past yeah. Past. So you know, you've, you've seen, yeah. yeah. So we have some of those. Uh, I think, and I think on the in-service staff development, I think it's just needing more opportunities to deal with those teachers. Mm -hmm. And some of this will probably be travel to staff development, mm -hmm. but it may be more contract services to. Because those are the centers that bring yeah. trainers in. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. This is all technology on page 14. Before we just before it completely slips my mind, uh, special ed. We're getting back to that. That special ed has their own transportation. Correct. They're not transported 
by well, regular bus. So. Yeah, not all of them do. Right. I mean, you got a, I don't know, you probably got the number of special ed buses we have. Do you know how many we currently have that run special it's, ed? It's, it's, it's higher than we think. It's, it's it? in the 30s. Okay, so we got 30 special ed buses. That are, that are delivering. And these, a lot of these buses not only take the children to school, they take them to doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. so, so these special ed transportation costs, are, are they in that? The, our transportation they are, budget. So they're, they're in another budget. Yes, yeah, they're so in, they're in our yeah, transportation now. Where are the EA, the bus EAs, Jeff? They're there. They're too. there also. They're also yeah. in transportation. 72, 710, the transportation. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So the law is now requiring us to transport kids from to doctor's appointment, whether they're in school or not in school? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's not that many, though. No, it's not, not that, that many, many, but there there are a few. And, it's, uh, and it's we not. have midday runs on the sped buses. Right, some for children other don't. The yeah. special ed buses, a child doesn't go to school all day. So they may only go half a day. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, that, that right. bus may be taking children in the morning, taking children home in the afternoon. Sometimes they pick up children in the afternoon and take them to school, and then they take. <coughs> These were being others. your medically fragile yeah. kids. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have a nurse to go with that child. Mm -hmm. Or a DA. Yeah. To the doctor or wherever. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And the parents don't have to pay anything. Mm -hmm. And or we don't have the insurance or something that we can collect from. Uh, we are looking at trying to get, uh, this will be the third time we have attempted it. Uh, it's been a very challenging program looking at getting Medicaid reimbursements. Right. We have yet to see the dollars, but we're in the early stages of working with. Uh, okay, if we didn't do it, who would do it? Would the parents be obligated to take their child to the doctor then? I would say so. I Unless, I mean, I would say I, that it would be. I, I, mean, I don't know, but that question hasn't come across my we'd desk, have to, so. <laughs> We'd have to uh, confer with our legal staff on that one. Okay. Yeah. You want technology, page 14? Yeah, technology. Okay, once again, uh, an increase there, the three. This is because of the increase of the number of, we went, what, two to one, we're mm -hmm. going two to one into high schools. Mm -hmm. And this is providing, help me out, and I'm thinking this is providing, this is specifically at the, at, uh, the, based out of the central office, is that correct? Right, but, but one of them will essentially always be at Rockville High. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one will spend probably at least half of his or her time at Rocky Fork Elementary. Yes. They used to split three, two, yeah. mm -hmm. with an elementary or yeah. a middle. Three days at one school, two yeah. days at another. Gotcha. And then just with the sheer, uh, we, we are getting, we could not put all of, and they're small laptops, but the boxes mm -hmm. are bigger. We could not fit them all in the maintenance warehouse last no, year. Right. We had to get secured storage at two of our schools. We have had so many coming in as part of this initiative. Large percentage increase. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and how much of that is impacted by the new schools? I, um, for the for the staff, half of it. So is that twelve percent, roundabout, or is it that twelve percent at the top there, Jeff? Well, okay, fifteen eight percent increase on the. The computer programmers are techs. I'd mm -hmm. say half of that is the new school, so mm -hmm. 7.9. Okay. I did that right. Yeah. Now, as we get down here in software, we have some new accounting rules coming into place on software purchases that have everyone thrilled. So this number will be changing. This is one I can tell you it will probably go down with more analysis. Because we're not going to have this to spread for expenditure across the board or it's at this district office. This is this is at the district office. Yes. Yeah. Or network oriented software. Again, the state what the way the way the state wants us to report it. So So a lot of what we're talking about here is new or updated. New or updated. Or, well, not that some in this is yes, we're looking at major servers, uh, 
network capacity items like that. So we weren't doing a lot of that last year, well, or is this uh, just a continuation of? If you add the two pieces together, what we have an in instruction on the first page to the page in here, they're pretty close. But on the software, line 471, we have multi-year contracts. So it depends on which ones are up for renewal. Okay. And that, that's where we, we, typically we have seen a big variation in that. So, so this budget, the reason it's growing, mm -hmm. will it grow next year, the year after, the oh, year after? Uh, yes, I would, I would, say, I would, so. I would say it would grow some, but it's yeah. going to be more not as large growth, and then you'll uh, see a year that it's no. a fairly large growth. So because, year, because, of the renewals, because of the because renewal, yeah. the contract renewals on mm -hmm. some of the right. things that we use. Yeah. Summer two, yeah. summer three, we've negotiated yeah. what we was the one, Steve? Negotiated yeah. something yeah. this year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, let's see. Dues and memberships so that all the organizations, including that I belong to. Right. Some of these you are required under statute mm -hmm. to belong to. Uh, uh, yeah. At least two or three of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Does the BEP 2.5, does that cover you? Does, does the BEP cover me? Yeah, for about like, uh, uh, in theory, I think it actually it covers, there's one, one. superintendent per Rutherford County that's being funded. Right. Yeah. We split with Murphy yeah. Girls City. About Fifteen percent, eighty-five percent. Fifteen, eighty-five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's the base? One twelve. One twelve. That's not fully funded, though. Oh. Yeah, I don't. It's not fully funded. Uh -huh. Yeah. But the, in yeah. theory, one twelve. How does the county like Blount County do? About that that was one of the incentives mm -hmm. to try to force consolidation. Right. But we'll only pay for a fifth, a tenth of your superintendent. Yeah. What a screwy system that mm -hmm. is. <laughs> it was difficult to follow. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Office of the principal. Okay, you'll notice that we did not have any, uh, uh, what well, we actually do, we had the yeah. two, but, they're, but they were they're, yeah. on partial this yeah, year. Yeah, they're right? partial this year, and when I set up my logic in this mm -hmm. series of spreadsheets and databases, if I split, it throws the benefits off, so that's why I showed it this way. Uh, the benefits are material for us. One other thing that I will add on to that, uh, that, that is included in this 13.1% 13 13 increase, all of the, the principals of Rutherford County are on 230-day contracts. We're one of very few that are on 230 contracts with what's required as far as the, you know, one of the things, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know something, and I'm not being critical of anything. Principals up until 1998 did not have the amount of accountability that they have today. You graduated your kids, you made sure that they got a good education, but as far as any accountability piece, it was as did you have a good football team or did you have a good um, uh, PTO and were the kids having fun? So there wasn't a whole lot of accountability. What they have to do now, they, they do training in the summer you know, they have, to, they have to do training this summer, required to do some training. And uh, so we uh, uh, proposed of, of moving in from a 230 to a 240. I think the impact was, what's the, the fiscal impact, 300? 300, 300 and something. Um, yeah. Usually the principals end up working. Already. Yeah, four, they just don't get paid four, for Four, five, six weeks during the summertime. They just don't get paid for it. Yeah, there's a lot of planning to do for the following mm -hmm. school year, hiring teachers, mm -hmm. moving teachers around, and those kinds of things. Absolutely. I, I, I know a lot of them say well, pretty active in the school, and, and, physically at the school. Well, well, they are. In fact, like hiring teachers, that's another you know, issue there. You know, we, I mean, you can, if they don't hire, we, we hold our job fair early, February. And if you don't hire someone, if you don't get your, get that taken care of early, by the time the summer comes around, you're going to be you're going to spend all summer yeah. interviewing, and then of course there's other things you got to do. The uh, the six assistant principals um, is two of them Rockville and three of them, is it how many is two it more are Rockville two more Rockville and one Grant one Grant and then growth and growth gotcha. The, 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 well, the old SACS model and the BEP both look at student one to, one to 500. And yeah, so our schools will hit a point where we have to add the APs. Just looking at the positions and your explanation of the 
accounting for them like this instead of splitting them and those kinds of things. It looks like most all of the increase relates to an increase in salary, a bump in the ladder, mm -hmm. and, and the new schools that are open. And the new schools. So, yes. Yeah. So that's all yeah. there is yeah. in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So how many assistant principals do you have per student? Well, one to five hundred. So you got to have four assistants in Blackman? No, uh, we don't. <laughs> we kind of cap it at four. Yeah, yeah we do. Have we four. have put five in on a. Don't we've got any four. Uh, we, all, all the time we put five in. I think yeah. there was a couple of times back when uh, Oakland back in the nineties yeah. had like twenty six hundred yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 It really got hot. Yeah. yeah. The black was 2,400. Yeah. I'm saying, how's the math work right there? Because. Uh, but, well, that's, you know, it's once we get. 2,500. One thing about one of the thing about high schools is if uh, if you're 2,400 or you're 2,200, they look like. I mean, if you give one to another one, the other one's going to expect it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. yeah. And I do have in the secretarial clerical about a net. 1.5 position add for growth in the elementary schools aside from Rocky Fork Elementary. I, that's one of those things I look at every few years and reallocate those hourly positions for looking for growth. So, other than that, they're all new schools and the, the AP growth. That is HR. Did I miss the I miss, I miss accounting page? I did? Yes. Oh my goodness, we don't want to do that. Here we go, yeah. Next is the accounting page. Of course, that uh, 1.6, uh, that's including you, correct? Yes, sir. That's including you on 120 day and our new um, assistant superintendent of, of uh, budget and finance. And a, a new either budget analyst or right. uh, staff accountant mm -hmm. to help my assistant, uh, my replacement. Is your replacement been identified yet? It is. And we've uh, yes. Doug Bouldery. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why isn't he here? Because he is still working for CTAS through May 21st. He will be in our joint meeting. Mm -hmm. It's his first day. <laughs> and he's going to try to come to the We're spring fiscal down. conference if mm -hmm. he can. Right. He's on the community care board, right. too. Mm -hmm. It's really good. He's a good man. Yeah. I was very happy. Mm -hmm. He can use that phone, I tell you that. Is that right? Oh, yes. He knows how to use that phone and the internet. Oh, <laughs> they're doing this. They're doing this. <laughs> so. yeah. And we are also asking for another payroll position right. in a county. We are over 5,000 employees. I'm the HR. Maybe I was trying to get there too quickly. On the HR, uh, we're, we're requesting a, uh, a 1.4. Is that correct, Jeff? Yeah. What about yes, I've sir. got a one one physician or a 120-day contract gotcha. for one. You know, and I'll, I'll kind of go over some numbers with you on HR. Of course, he just got through telling you how many how many how many employees do we have? Active employees over five, 52, 5,300. 5,300 vacancies. And we've got, if this was funded, we would have 6.4 people in, in that. Mm -hmm. That would include the assistant superintendent of, of, yes. of HR, right? right? Yes, sir. All right, let me give you some numbers. So, you, so we always get compared to, you know, local systems that are comparable to our size. Uh, Williamson County uh, HR department, they have an assistant superintendent of budget, uh, excuse me, of, of uh, HR and 15 additional positions. Montgomery County, they have a chief human resource officer and 16 additional positions in HR. Hamilton County, they have a chief uh, officer of the uh, HR along with 22 additional positions. So I would say that they're probably over BEP. Uh, they're, they're going above and beyond. Yeah. So we're, you know, 6.4, that's pretty good. I don't know if you were going to include this since this is your first time mm -hmm. when you presented at budget. Absolutely. But one of the things that I know um, Mr. Odom presented, and I think mm -hmm. probably Mr. Hill before him, 
they always talk about how much we spend on admin, right. and admin positions, mm -hmm. and admin expense, because mm -hmm. we're always better right. than the yeah. state well, average. Absolutely. I mean, I can yeah. I can t I can tell you. You you mentioned about uh, five uh, APs. Uh, our uh, Wilson County, Williamson County, all of us around us five. That's that's not predicated on in high school. Five APs. Yeah, so, yeah we, we well, and central office positions. Right, in central office. Right. Folks, that, you know, nobody at this table, nobody at this commission that I've heard has ever criticized that, but there are critics out there right. of um, funding and, administrative positions. And, and I'll, I'll take, you know, I'll, I will tip my hat to the HR. Uh, they do a great job, and they don't complain. And they're efficient and effective. Just any, any time that we're, we shine, I want to make sure mm -hmm. we spotlight that. And so I think that's mm -hmm. a good thing for your spotlight. Absolutely. Okay. This is some of the increase with additional uh, schools. But Jeff, you might want to go. Nearly on. entirely. Is all related to new schools. New schools. Yes, sir. The, the increases in the utilities are, are our estimates for the new schools. and. Most of the custodians are the custodians for the new schools. There might be like two growth positions that we'll allocate in that. But those custodians at all of our schools seem to be a fairly stable uh, group. You don't turn those guys over a whole lot. We have some turn so, um, but, uh, Maybe not our leads, they don't turn over that quick. But yeah. some of our, yeah, with the economy as good as it's yeah. been, it's, yeah, we turn them over yeah. now. Yeah. That's where we see a big increase mm -hmm. because of the turnover. Because, because of, of pay. Salary. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and quite frankly, that was one of the questions that was asked for us. This is another thing. Uh, when we did a comparative analysis of what we pay our custodial staff and our classifieds, even to Williamson County, we beat them by a dollar and a half, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you mentioned the economy that those custodians, mm -hmm. they're not going to other custodial jobs, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to more of a factory type of That's environment. Right. More, more, more better pay. So, so yeah. it, it's not like they're leaving no, to, to go no, to. Uh, no. Now, the other thing we have on this page, we'll get more into it a little later on, line item 720 plant operation equipment. That increase is money we have in there right now for other safety items. Mm -hmm. It's I stuck it in there. We're a little premature on how it's going to flow, but I wanted to basically put it in as a placeholder as we we don't have our safe schools grant. We don't know where we want to get mm -hmm. uh, for the other the governor's other school safety <coughs> mm -hmm. So I'm hoping we will have some revenue come in to offset part of that. We don't know yet. Sometime in May, hopefully we will find out. I guess when we got it last year. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I tried to be conservative and air on the high side on that. Jeff, how much money do we get that comes into our school through grants? Oh man. God. We just got a hundred and what twenty dollars, one hundred twenty thousand dollar grant for the CMT for. For uh, our, um, was it our fine arts? This Three. fine arts got one yeah. too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was pretty big. Do you didn't know that? What you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really yeah. sure. hey, am I asking the wrong questions? Well, I'm, in the I'm GP, real curious to see what we, 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 we have probably four possible ways we record different grants. Some of them are at the school level. Some, Some of these grants, even if it's a big dollar amount, will wind up flowing directly to the schools in their school activity Breaking, funds. breaking the break, break, yeah. we did get grants. He's yeah. asked about grants. Yeah. Didn't come directly necessarily to right. us. To us. It would yeah. be broken down by yeah. their schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I might have been up here at another meeting. You might have been. We didn't recognize it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we, we also, several of our programs that we run through the general purpose budget are grant oriented mm -hmm. with anywhere from 50 to 70 percent to 100 percent of the funding flowing through that budget. Mm -hmm. So we have state and we have charitable grants and uh, the safe, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the item that Miss Dana mentioned the walking tracks. We have right. grants coming in from mm -hmm. businesses and charities for items like that. Then we have all of our federal projects. Some of those are grant oriented, so it's not an easy question, mm -hmm. no. 
That number doesn't live in one bucket. Is what no, it saying. does not it live in, in one bucket. Places. It lives mm -hmm. in, since we have 45 schools with school activity fund the next year, 47, mm -hmm. it lives in 50-some buckets. And there's a lot of teachers that apply for yeah. grants that, mm -hmm. that we don't even know about that go directly yeah, to, to the them school. at their school level yeah. to buy mm -hmm. extra computers or right. books or things like yeah. that. Yeah. I say small, I'm not being flippant. They may be $500 to $20,000. There are employers who have programs mm -hmm. where their employees, uh, I think State Farm, I think mm -hmm. still has it, but they, in, they're involved in various community activities and then they can basically designate about a $500 grant to mm -hmm. a school. Mm -hmm. We have the, the BEP through the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce right. those grants go to the school. Mm -hmm. We've got them all over the place. Oh, yeah, a lot. In every different place. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'm just wanting to compare what it does to the budget. I know that sounds. I mean, if we're getting, yeah, we, we don't get, we don't get. Uh, I mean, when you're doing your estimates right here, do you mm -hmm. take in consideration those grants? As far I, the ones I take into consideration are the uh, the governor's voluntary preschools, uh, coordinated school health and the safe schools money, mm -hmm. but I don't have a final figure for that one right. yet. But we will have. Those are the, and then I generally, I will put in a small amount of donations because we've got a couple of programs. Our Spectrum program generally gets 20 some thousand a year. Uh, we'll have some, so I will have something built into the budget for some of those grants, just so when they get the money, they can go ahead and be spending it. But overall, percentage wise, it's, it's a fraction of a right. percentage. Oh, yeah, a fraction of a percentage. Free technical education, we get yeah. the Perkins grant. Right, but that, that's but just for in a federal program. We're not going to be able to reduce the tax yeah. rate based on grants. Right. No, yeah. I don't think No, yeah. but I think it was two years ago we got a healthy equipment grant for CTE, that mm -hmm. that one did flow yeah. through the GPS budget. So it's it was yeah. a good one. But we had to purchase the equipment and apply for mm -hmm. reimbursement. Mm -hmm. that, so. That was over 300,000, I believe. Oh, it, it was uh, it, closer to half a million. Is that right? That one, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the initial grant was in the 300,000 mm -hmm. range, and Tyra put in so much more, and other systems didn't apply that we got close to half more. a million. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay, what are we up to here now? Transportation? Uh, page 22 of 30 minutes. 22 of yes. This is your wheelhouse here. You want to say anything about it? Don't say anything, you're asking this. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I may comment on item 701, you see that million three mm -hmm. drop. That is our state school safety equipment grant that we got for this current year. And we just don't know. Yeah. We're not getting that. We're, We're not getting that. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know that. Yeah, yeah. So the, these. Does this, is this influenced by, is it the six cents that we set aside? No, the six cents is another budget total. Mm -hmm. this, this is totally This is maintenance. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's over a $100,000 capital project, right? That's right. The, that's yes. the one mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's created a much more mm -hmm. calm environment between the commission and the school board as it relates to expenditures that had to be remember, asked for. Remember that, remember that sentiment. Did you say, did you watch the meeting last night? Oh, well. <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie. Fun. Transportation. Okay, transportation is a request and the increase in uh, two secretaries uh, for transportation. And I'm um, assuming this is a bus, what is it, bus attendance, mm -hmm. 1.9. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with a total increase there in labor to 3.9. For those that don't know, we have, we have five ladies in transportation and they haven't had any help in about 10 years. And our bus routes continue to grow every year. And they're at their, they're, these ladies are about ready to mutiny on us. They, they've got to have some help. And two is about as bare bones as we could ask for. 
for the to help them out. We got to have some new routing and some new. Uh, the state has uh, got some new requirements that transportation has to follow. Bookkeeping, we've got to have some help. So I have a question on this. Uh, do you have anything in here? Have you put in this budget portion of the budget, or will it come somewhere else? The schools portion of the proposed new communica tele uh, radio communication system. What do you put it in the no. AP? No. No. Because okay. it will not be paid for out of the bond fund for playing out of general fund because of, you know, the reason why. Right. That's right. So mm -hmm. I just wondered if you were proposing. Of course, it may be a year. It may be you could choose to stay the same. To, Actual infrastructure probably be if we do, assuming we do pass that and do that, will probably be a year and a half in the making. Right. We uh, just haven't gotten enough information no. on that at this point. I didn't know whether you were putting in yeah. this year's budget or not. Yeah. If we'll we be here, probably we voting on that again in the Well, that's uh, one, one of the points we, yeah, if we if run we put it in here, yes, budget, we'll yeah. give we'll City of Murfreesboro 15%. Right. So, yeah. This, this is just, does this include private owned buses and drivers? Our contracts, yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, sir. It includes our contracts. That's in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. yes, How often do they come up? That's contracts. Uh, contracts. contracts. I think it's, 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 it's not a stagger zone. It's I mean, every, every, every three years. Three years. It's every three years. Yeah. When's it coming up again? Hmm. I think it's 2021. And, and one of the things I think that was good last night too, when we, uh, when, when uh, the transportation director did a presentation of what we're paying, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, I think Hamilton County mm -hmm. has it contracted out. And what there's, is it Knox? Knox is most most similar to us. Right. Knox is similar to us. Hamilton yeah. County's got, they have one large vendor For which has a hundred buses, yeah. and then the the rest of their buses are like us individual right. contracts. Yeah. Right. So they're, they're But our expenditures yeah. compared to Williamson, Knox, Hamilton, the counties yeah. that are comparable mm -hmm. in size, mileage-wise and student-wise, mm -hmm. they're all two and a half to three million dollars. But these prices aren't going up until 2021. Their contract. I mean, are you asking for yeah. an increase on yes. bus drivers right. this year? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. why are we doing that when it doesn't come up till 2021? Oh. I well, thought it's contract. Uh, well, in that three-year contract, we do have a provision for annual increases right. depend okay. at the discretion of the board. So line 315, you got a 9% increase? And that, we also are adding 15 buses. Okay. So, that's so that is, five, that's more than the five. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. the request yeah. Yeah. for the increase yeah. and the additional buses. Just to, 15 buses? Yes, mm -hmm. 15. Just a point of reference on uh, 40, close to 47,000 kids, of those we've got about 27,000 are actually riding our buses. I mean, twenty-seven thousand, sixty percent, mm -hmm. somewhere like yeah. that. What's a, an attendant? Like special ed mm -hmm. buses. We also have some of those paid out of the federal IDEA funds. We do other contracts as well. So it says contract with other agencies, contract with Genesis parents, and contract. Rutherford Academy is that line. Okay. Three twelve was Genesis. Yes, and then we do have, okay, rarely we will have contracts with parents. Those we typically, under the homeless McKinney Vento, we run through a federal project, typically. In other words, if you're, if you're an Atlas child that is considered homeless, we provide transportation, but if it's not available for a bus, the, the yeah. parent, we can pay them mileage yeah. for the parent to but be that, able to So generally we've been able to use federal funds right. for that. Yes. And what's yes. your definition of homeless? Whatever the feds say it is. What do they say it? What is the feds? It's uh, uh, it not a permanent domicile. You know, you could live, for example, living with living with your relatives. Um, you know, living in a hotel. Yeah. Um, but there's a divorce, and you have right. to move. You have to move. You know, uh, anything where you're not yeah. living in your permanent like where you, your location, where you, you know, wherever you were living prior to this taking place and that is for one year that's one year right? it gets kind of dicey now I mean and we've had we've had uh, we've had them um, uh, 
be considered uh, Atlas and actually returned back to, to the location where they were formerly located, but because under that umbrella for that one year, you know, if they chose to stay in that school, they got to stay in school. We do anything as, as far as assuring the private bus owners maintain and operate safe buses. Well, we, our know, buses caps. are inspected twice a year by the state, and they have, there's a very rigorous yeah. requirement. Yes, sir. And we have an age limit on buses and a mileage limit. Yeah. When they get to a certain point, I don't care how good a shape it's in, you've mm -hmm. got to get a new one or a new work. Doesn't have to be brand new, but it has to meet the requirements. Send them over to the workhouse, don't mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, yes. Is that the buses? That was the conversation last mm -hmm. night in the public safety budget. Some of these aging vehicles. Well, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, with Metro, they own their own buses. And uh, we picked up, my, our church picked up some, like four retired buses with pretty good shape for uh, like some change. So when you get into that bus business, you're going to, it's a losing proposition. Oh, yes. And when you start owning, but you become not an educator, but you start yeah. building bus yeah. uh, buildings yeah. and, and, you know, employees, yeah. employees, benefits, employees, benefits yeah. that's right. Yeah. It becomes a, I mean, yeah. if y'all might have uh, heard it already, but Metro's proposing a, a $1 trillion GP budget for this come fiscal year. They were already at 900 and something billion. So it's it's a big it's a big part of it. Considering liability, mm -hmm. I know our bus drivers, bus company, once they own the buses, should have insurance liability mm -hmm. and all of that. We have the, we carry the liability insurance. What about these other contractors? Even the similar, parents, mm -hmm. they're they're under similar. We do make sure the parents have full coverage. Just well, liability. I I'm not sure on the parents. I'm thinking for Genesis and Rutherford Academy. I just didn't know if we'd be liable or something. Do we require cameras on the buses? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's expensive. Is that their, mm -hmm. is that their expense or ours? It's ours because we own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have contracts with these, they're just bus drivers, they're not bus they're owner they, they they owner owners. Operator. So they're, they're owner operators, independent contractors. So we people, put the cameras in. Yes. And yeah, we maintain more than one bus. Where is that at on here? The equipment in? Where is that the at? Equipment and in some of it's in other contracted services, some of it's in other supplies and materials depending on the dollar threshold. Because we pay us we, we have thing. GPS tracking and those yeah. so we go through a service yeah. that that provides some of that. Here's my other question then. So when we, you said we had to get rid of these buses, do we We take, it off, that? We take it off their okay. bus and put it on their new bus. bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And every so often we have to upgrade. Right. And we're in the middle of upgrading. We're trying to do X amount of buses a, a year. Yeah. We're getting close to having them all mm -hmm. upgraded. I've got cameras where I'll mm -hmm. every one of them are equipped. Mm -hmm. All the buses are now. Yeah. That was about a quarter of a million dollars for us in our campus. Mm -hmm. Should have. Uh, All right. Community services. You want to speak on that? That is the children's charity fund that we have through our attendance teachers. Uh, donations from the United Way, we get a healthy amount. We get donations from various people in the community. These are free for Coats and shoes, coats and shoes, clothes, clothes get done, whatever we run. Yeah. Okay. 25 is our preschool program. This one is a blend. We have the governor's voluntary preschool, which is a grant that probably, because we, we tend to have more experienced teachers have come into those positions, we're probably getting 70-some percent. Mm -hmm. If we have a new teacher, we're, we were getting close to 100 before medical insurance went up. So. What is a free school? Three- and four-year-olds, uh, what, social, so socioeconomically mm -hmm. challenged is, is the primary purpose. Governor Brown has started this program. But do they have to apply? Yes, they have mm -hmm. to apply. The other piece that we have in here is one of my least favorite unfunded mandates. 
Sped is free school. Free school. So, and we, so. And those mandates are federal. State. Federal. Mm -hmm. federal. But we, we have no funding source for them right. in the BEP. And, and what makes that challenging, too, because they, they, yes. they audit. Yeah. And they want a, a, an inclusive environment. Yes. So we have to bring in gen ed kids into the program. Well, we found out that we're not inclusive enough. We needed more gen ed. So in order to address that, yeah. there's where you're increasing one of your special ed. I, didn't, I forgot to mention that one back in special ed. That would be some of that right there. Yes. Too. Because of the pre-K program, I think we're, we were like 1585. You've got to get a little bit closer than that, you know? So we have to bring in more gen ed kids to make sure that we meet that mandate of in inclusiveness. And I think every, every system complains about this. Yes. Is that, is that preschool, can we quantify that it's helpful? Well, I, I think it's definitely helpful for some, some for some of these. I would assume so, but it's, it's, can we really say, yeah, we know that it is because of blah blah blah? I would say the states. I mean, I haven't seen yeah. it, but I'm sure they they've kept yeah. data on it. They'd yeah. have to. I don't know. I I can imagine it not being. Mm -hmm. I think you would be. The environment yeah. at the school yeah. has to be mm -hmm. a lot yeah. better than that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe what they're exposed to elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then of course 26 is the uh, regular capital outlay and yeah. other expenditure totals. <coughs> from you. What's in there? Well, uh, the main expense we've had this year is, which I will be amending some money to cover it, is uh, design, uh, some other issues, replacing the Blackman High Wrestling Building. But we have used some of this money in previous years for some land testing, just mm -hmm. different capital needs that come up that don't fit anywhere else. Okay, page 2730. Do you want me to handle that? Yeah, event? go ahead. Our capital leases, which were for our water conservation and upgrading plumbing several years ago, those are, that one is running, getting close to being paid. We do have a net increase because our last big EESI loan, those payments are going to start coming in. <coughs> and, and, and the net increase is about 180,000 principal and interest. And then we, we have a million total. 282 project we're working on this year <coughs> that will start flowing into the repayment cycle next year, which is, that's the cause for our net increase. But these are all projects we have done that are energy efficient related. But, but they're all more than paper. Oh themselves. yes, they so, have absolutely. Yeah. The, yeah. To me, this isn't real money. I mean, it's, right. Uh, it's something we have to budget for. But yeah. absolutely. <coughs> we have a deal on that too for you, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Just the just the thought of where we are versus where we were back mm -hmm. in the nineteen nineties as it relates oh, yeah. to. Roof maintenance, as an example, yeah. is just amazing, mm -hmm. and what we've been able to do with building new schools. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So refer to page thirty. Are you notice that uh, overall position increases? Whether it be uh, new schools growth, central office staff, transportation, and so forth, is 218.2 positions. Of those 218.2 positions, 101.7 of those are Rockvale and Rocky Fork element. So approximately 47% of those 218.2 were are for those two specific schools. I, I can't write as fast yeah. as you can speak, yeah. so save that one. Yeah, the 218.2 positions that are in 
the uh, proposed budget. Right. 101.7 of those, that's certified, classified, and so forth and so on, uh, are allocated to the two new schools. So that, that makes up 47% of that 218.2. One of the things we're seeing, we were talking this morning, the different patterns you see here. Mm -hmm. Last year we saw our growth percentage slowly dropping in the right. course of the year. Mm -hmm. This year we are seeing the opposite. Mm -hmm. It has been slowly increasing mm -hmm. throughout the year. Right. That, that's one of the questions I was going to mm -hmm. answer. You partially answered it. Uh, and maybe you could send us some numbers on that. Uh, when you, you get up from here in May uh, before our joint meeting, of how many actual new students we had for the 2018-19 right, year yeah. and what yeah. that percentage of yeah. increase was. Well, uh, 2.68. 2 at, at our most recent, but I don't remember the number, mm -hmm. the, but that was the percentage, percentage increase. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, that was in the, at the seventh attendance period. And for you guys that are new, you know, we've had times in the past where it was like 5% but higher. But the but yeah. the base was a lot yes. lower. A lot lower. Right. You know, yeah. when you're so talking about numbers are actually that's right. Getting mm -hmm. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it impacts yeah. it. If I remember right, it was just a tad over two percent last year. Right. So you're right. That's correct. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That is yeah. correct. It's, it's yeah. Increasing. Mm -hmm. Just to, to once again summarize that the two new schools are creating about forty-seven percent of our uh, of the our personnel additional personnel yeah. yes, sir. which yeah. leaves that the increase at about four and a half right. mm -hmm. somewhere around yeah. four and a half that's right yeah and our our growth this past year was somewhere in the neighborhood of four percent mm -hmm. was it growth Persons uh, uh, students and students no, no. they wouldn't two point six two point six yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it? yeah. 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 And, and yeah. we're anticipating uh, us, us. This budget includes the anticipation of a certain a similar number. Right. For yes. Next year. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hopefully, correct. hopefully we've got three percent covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then you'll go with the. You got your phone. You can go with the uh, cafeteria. Centralized cafeteria fund. <clears throat> All right. You know, did that, Jeff? Talk it's, about we're increasing oh, and what we got. Yeah. Our this, large prices. This is one of our. This is our weird fund. We are to have three months operating surplus. So. That's how we kind of manage this, and our other purpose is to not have to subsidize it from the general purpose school fund as we did 20 years ago. So we are budgeting a deficit. We will not have a million dollar deficit unless something really goes crazy with food costs or something. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be conservative on my revenue numbers. The feds have not set our next year's reimbursement rate yet. We usually don't have that when we do this budget. The, our actual deficit will be smaller than a million, but if we exceed that three per three month, we have to submit a plan to the state to spend it down. So this is it, it's yeah. best to budget this, right? I, yeah, I, three I, month I, only. I, yeah, three I'm month saying, operational. Yeah. That's that's different, but yeah. Dr. Todd, when he would come before the county commission yes. every month and talk about surplus funds. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This yes. is one of them that yes. he was talking about yes. time mm -hmm. and time again. Yes. And no matter how you explained it to him, mm -hmm. he wouldn't buy it. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Do, do you want me to take credit for this one, Mr. Spellmark? Yeah, I just came out with more or less. Yeah, I came out with more or less. Yeah, go ahead. So, you would brought this one really needs to be ten cents, cents right. <laughs> and the board agreed yeah. with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was which him, one, and it was me. <laughs> which one did you get? Major, uh, major, major capital. Major capital projects. Mm -hmm. The rightmost column. Mm -hmm. 
423.19. Yeah. How long has it been since we've raised that, Jeff? But I don't know if we've ever raised it. We, we have gone, we were sharing it, we weren't sharing it. Uh, our pennies dropped, it was taken back up to six cents with a reappraisal. I realize our dollars stayed the same, but it dropped to 4.7 right. cents. Right. Our backlog is growing. More schools, the schools that were new and built when you and I were first working together right. are 15 and they more years old. Good. They're not young schools anymore, and <laughs> got some, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> tell me about them. Ms. There, there's going to be um, there's going to be some questions about wants. And, oh, absolutely, and, and, and needs. Right. If, if that's you, that's why we that's brought this to If you actually need uh, ten cents, okay, instead mm -hmm. of yeah, six cents, mm -hmm. if you actually need that, could that be? Done over a, a two or three year period of time. I think we could. I think so. Yes. So if we wanted to get you ten cents, and yeah. we did a penny this year, and a penny next right. year, and a penny next year, and, or one and, and, and a half the cents appraisal or don't like drop back on us. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Mr. Lee. Yeah. And you're not gonna shock them, are you? No. <laughs> okay. um, I would like to give you all a little bit of information, and it's not dollar figures. I, I have the dollar figures, but that's not what I would like to share with you. Um, because I'm new in my position, and Mr. Spurlock was new in his position, I felt it prudent to do uh, an inventory, for lack of a better term, an appraisal of our facilities. And in doing this, I learned a lot. I also learned that We've got a lot of things that our maintenance staff has been doing a yeoman's oh, yeah. um, effort in keeping running because they're beyond their life. Uh, and I can, I'll can i start with HVAC. Um, most of us own homes, and every 10 to 15 years, we have to replace our air conditioning unit. Eventually, if we've done real well on our maintenance and we have a good HVAC company, they may get us a couple of years after that, but eventually your components, it just you just got to replace it. Presently, we have 16 schools or 16 campuses that are in that. Uh, we're, we're using a uh, life cycle of 20 years for our schools instead of 15. We're trying to get, and that's kind of where we are. We've got 16 schools that are presently 20 years or more. The problem we're having is that the R22, which is the Freon that goes in the air conditioning units, is going to be outlawed next year. There's a surplus of it, but they, I'm told, and most suppliers tell me that there's maybe a two-year supply. There's a new refrigerant, R14, which is a replacement for it. However, it operates at a higher pressure. These systems that we have, a lot of them, you can, as we call it, juice it up. You can get put Freon in it a couple, three times a year, and you can get through the summer. When we go to this R14, I'm afraid they're just, they're not going to hold. They're just, it's right. going to come apart. And when it bursts, then we've got a large school that's possibly completely without air. So we have presently 16 of those schools that fall into that category. 20 years or more on the existing system. Now, that's not to say every single component in that school is the original, but for all intents and purposes, it is. Then we have 19 campuses that over the next four years are going to be coming into that same category. They're at 80%, 85%, 90%. <laughs> and to get these systems updated is, is not small dollars. Um, so we're trying to get ready to begin. And with the 4.7 cents that we presently get, that roofing um, money that, and we are, the county is in a lot better shape than we were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it came up last night, and I really didn't think about it till we started having this discussion. When I started here 13 years ago, one of the first things that I was involved in was taking, trying to get, we were fighting with the, the engineering firm and, and the warranty company at Oakland High School on that roof. 
in the library every time it leaked. We were in there putting six mil poly underneath the ceiling tiles and funneling it to 55 gallon trash cans. And we fought them for a year before we ever were able to re-roof that section of Oakland High School. This year, I'm going to finish <laughs> Oakland High School. All right. We've been re-roofing a section, three to five hundred thousand dollar sections, which are not small money, mm -hmm. but three to five hundred thousand dollar section, and it's taken us twelve years to get Oakland High School. Now, I say all that to say we've done a really good job of patching and keeping things, you know, under control and doing our maintenance kind of things to get us this far. But that first section that we did is five years away from starting all over again. And we've got 12 schools that we haven't even gotten to yet. So the, we've grown and we've increased those numbers and the four cents or five cents, whatever it's been, is maintained over that period of time. And this year we're looking at getting 4.5 million and I'm going to be honest, I had $2 million worth of roofs on there for this year. And I've taken a million and a half of it out. And I say out, I've just, I've moved it to next year because it's not leaking. It's got blisters and it looks bad, but we've got needs that we have not addressed for the last few years that we need to address. So I guess I say all that to say, We've got some things coming at us in the future that are that in the near future that are coming quickly um, that we're going to have to look at to where and, and Mr. Spurlock and I are still discussing our options that we would like to bring to our board before we bring it to you guys. But I wanted to say tonight that we are looking at these long term and how do we get this number up over the next few years, but as we do that, some of these items are going to have to be addressed before we get there. And, and we don't, now that we've got all of this information, we haven't had the time to completely put our arms around what we would like to come to you as a recommendation on how we uh, attach it, uh, attack it. Um, that five cents, I believe right. it was. Yes. How long ago was that, Joe? 0708 with DEP 2.0, Dr. Bullen's suggestion. It was, yeah. It was, it's, it's worked well for us because you, you remember the days oh, yeah. when, and you do too, Miss Cook, when any money that was left over from a building project, we would come and be asking the commission, and we were so we were using borrowed funds for re-roofing, and other per and some of that I can see using borrowed money for because these do have a long enough life. Mm -hmm. yes. But we did we wanted to get away with it and try to do it from current operating. This is not a level that it lets us do that. And we, we've had discussions with one of our options being to get a, of course commission approval and build uh, on a larger scale than our EESI energy conservation projects. Are there projects that we could do and commit to pay for out of GPS funds, but and have some there's some, things, issue debt that there's we some things we can do uh, energy-wise that, that we can recoup some of this money some, to help pay for some, some of it, but it's not gonna pay for yeah, it all. It's not gonna pay for it all. Let me just say that looking back to Pre oh, 2008. Yes. Oh, yes. It, it, um, I, I don't guess anybody was here with me. Uh, Miss Cook. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you were, but it, it was a nightmare. It was. Uh, yes. For you guys, yes. and it was a nightmare for us yes. because everything you came with was expenses that mm -hmm. was not budgeted for. Right. Sure. And, and you couldn't plan for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And going, Going to that fund um, was uh, was a, a, the, one of the smartest things that's, that's been done. Mm -hmm. and, and since then, there's no telling how many new schools we've built. And, and doubling that, mm -hmm. well, it's not really doubling, but taking it up to 10, 10 cents right now would also probably be a, a really, really smart thing to do because 
once again these new schools that have been built back in 2000, mm -hmm. yeah. 2007, yes. 2008, 2009 yeah. are no longer new schools. Right. And it's hard not to think of them as new schools, but they're not. Yeah. And, and just the cost of replacing certain things have escalated so much too. So I, I, I'm probably going to be one of your biggest supporters when it comes to increasing that fund. Uh, but I'll also kind of warn you that that, that would be the, an easy thing to cut. And uh, one of the dumbest things that we could possibly do is to cut that fund. And it's a, it's a, it's a fund that it, it, it's your guys' problem. It's no longer our problem right. to deal with how we're going to pay for that, right. especially when a, when a roof. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I remember Mayor Ketron when he was a commissioner. Mm -hmm. and, he'll, and it, I don't know if it, these are his exact words, but he'll say, I'll never ever vote to build a new school unless it has some kind of a pitch roof on it. Mm -hmm. I'm done with flat yeah. roofs. Yeah. And yeah. as a result of that, I, I remember the school board yes. kicking back on that a little bit. Well, part, it, it increased our cost, mm -hmm. and you, that was one of that was the side that y'all had to absorb. Yeah, yeah. but but long but, term. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Heck of a lot cheaper. Right. Yeah. The Vernon High School. I went in. They had mm -hmm. garbage bags right. over the computers, mm -hmm. and the water just okay. pouring in, and the yes. and the 50, uh, 55 mm -hmm. gallon yeah. drums are out there. Yeah. Got into the library. One of the library rooms right. about. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, no. mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, that ten cents does not scare me at, at all. Yeah. Simply because we have so much more yeah. yes. to maintain yeah. than we did. Plus, the, just the cost of things has gone up. Yeah. It, it, it's, it scares me to think of what. What we pay for Blackman High School right. versus what we're going to be, what we pay for Rock Bell High School, yes. and if we ever get Christiana online, how much that would be. Yeah. The whole thing is frightening to me. And to talk about a penny here and a penny there to maintain the schools that we built, it just doesn't make any sense to try to squeeze those pennies. So yeah. I, I, I don't. I'm pretty sure that the commission is going to listen to. The need to maintain those, and, and it's a once again large asset. Well, it's the number of schools that we had back then versus the number of schools that we have right now, and versus the number of schools that we have. Uh, what we're talking about right now, you know, and still in my lifetime probably are going to be older schools that are going to need some maintenance done on them. That, that, that what kills me is that. Uh, the equipment that we used to get, the, the heating and air units that we used to get would last over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Sure. But now they made them energy efficient yes. and they last half the time. Yes, mm -hmm. true. So I'm not so sure that mm -hmm. the yeah. energy efficiency is worth the expense mm -hmm. of it. But it, it's a crazy, crazy world, and, and I, you know I'm I'm really on your side when it comes to that. It's crazy, crazy, crazy not to maintain our buildings the way they should be. But I remember Dr. Bullen being very uh, forceful in his uh, comments on that, and it, it it was not an attempt to shirk that duty, but it was very painful getting the funding. You know, well, if, you just, worked well. if you just looked at the money we were spending, right. we had to come up with right. one year. It way exceeded that four cents or yeah. five cents yes. at the time. Mm -hmm. So it just made financial yeah. sense okay. to do that. And, and, and if we don't do something along these lines, and, and I know what you're saying is absolutely positively on, on target. I know it is. Uh, that if we don't do that, all of a sudden, a roof is going to start leaking, and we're going to have to come up with the money. Yes. So, right. so you're going to have to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's not one of those things that is nice to do. I was talking about a minute ago. You know, these are, are these things that we absolutely positively have to do. But maintaining those buildings is, is just really, to me, just not an option, and it doesn't make any sense uh, not to maintain them and, and, and prevent problems. And I know you're maintenance staff. I know you've got specialists that are air conditioning folks and electrical folks and, and I know they do a really good job uh, and we want to continue those guys and giving them what they need to, to, 
to get the job done. It's, it's a, it's a, and I know I'm going on and on, and I apologize for that, but I remember what it was like, and, and I don't ever want to go there again. We went, we went through that with the jail. Uh, if, yes. you, if some of you guys remember yes. a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, yeah. and, and you know, I, yeah. it's just the same scenario with yeah. the schools. And I, I'd, make rather this see, I'd rather see it rain on a on a an inmate's head than I had it <laughs> one of my grandkids' heads. If we want to make this meeting compete with our public safety meeting last night, we've got another hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not. I will speak on behalf <laughs> But you're right. I mean, if we don't, when you get a roof leak, roof's the most important part of the structure. When you get a roof leak, you not only have the cost of repairing that roof, but you've got the cost of whatever it leaked on. Okay. Be that carpet on the inside that's soggy right now, the mold that's going to grow, removing that, uh, the electronics, uh, you get rid of a whole bunch of computers. So, you know, really and truly, I mean, of all the repairs, the, well, the HVAC, I mean, if you you let a building sweat. Mm -hmm. It's just as bad as a leak. It's right. just as bad as a leak. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You go through that sweat process. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on a prolonged basis, uh, yeah. So we've got to maintain the buildings. That's one thing for sure. I mean, if, you know, no one would go out here and build a three hundred thousand dollar home and then let the roof leak. Uh, it just it just defies common sense. This 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 kind of information that you put together is the kind of stuff that we would ask for. Right. Uh, so to. to feed us with this kind of stuff makes my job and my decision just a lot more. Right. <laughs> I've got a longer list. That's just yeah. kind of, that was That's just, the was just the going, what do you want this year? <laughs> <laughs> you, better, you better cut off. <laughs> and Jeff, Jeff I've, I've learned a lot this year from Jeff on how this process works, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. And he gets frustrated I, I with it. to cover <laughs> 10 <laughs> cents. <laughs> well, we appreciate what you're talking about. But yeah. uh, we do want to, you know, keep you appraised, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's opening for me. Mm -hmm. And I've been here a while, not as long as you, but I've been here a while. Anybody else have anything for Mr. Sparrowlock? What yes. about Saturday? Are okay, we still yeah. on for yes, Saturday, right? Yes, I was right? going to announce that next. Okay. Um, we've got the Laverne High School, Smyrna High School stadium tours on Saturday. We're going to meet at Laverne at 9 a.m. Um, this has been one of those issues that's been on the capital projects and has been bumped for I don't know how many years, but um, you know, and, and as a smart commissioner, you know, I, and Chair Felton Ed, I stood toe to toe with my people in Smyrna and I told them I can't fight for you know um, these stadiums when we're trying to build classrooms. You can only say that so many years. I, you know, I, I told you all last, you know, the last commission meeting. It's a whole lot like a couple trying to plan to have a baby. There's never a good time. You can see right now, there's never going to be a good time to make these changes to these stadiums. Um, this is a very underserved population that we have at these two schools. All of the Title I schools in Rutherford County, except for one, is in the north end of the county, which means that those are the students that are going into these high schools. They don't have the resources or access to the resources to put in turf, so much less to do any kind of a, a match or matching funds on you know, things that are needed in these stadiums, these stadium improvements. So it's, our, it's going to be our responsibility to step up and do it, and it's going to be a tough year to do it. I was here last night when the sheriff presented his budget and his needs. Um, you know, when it, we're, we're trying to take care of our teachers mm -hmm. as well. This is that day of reckoning that we, the more experienced commissioners, have been warned about that it's coming, and it's here. And so it's going to be time to make some tough decisions, and, and I know it's a big ask, but um, I think it's a deserved one. And so I need you to see in person what the need is. So I hope everyone, especially everybody from Health and Ed, hope every one of you can be there Saturday morning. At 9 o'clock. As I said when we talked about it before, I thought we'd already done it. Yeah, I thought only, the funds were already there. Yeah. Well, we only funded design. Yeah. And, and yeah. one of the reasons was when I toured the old Smyrna High School, uh, Bud Rakes came up and put his arms around me and, 
told me I'd better vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> or else. Do I need to have blood there Saturday? Yeah, is that I'm more than that, that you have blood there Saturday? No, we, we, still did, have a yeah. we did come up with funds to, we did some changes to cover ourselves on some ADA compliant yes. changes some bleaches, some bleaches. in the seating. Yeah. But that's which all. Was, which was done. something we had no choice yeah. Yeah. but to do. Yeah. We had yeah. to do. We, we had, had no to do choice. That. I, I would like to bring up one thing, Chairman, regarding what we're talking about. Uh, I won't be there Saturday, but uh, I went to the tour of the facilities four years ago, which is that's how long we've been talking about it. But one of the things I think I asked at the next. Uh, very shortly thereafter, uh, probably the next year or, or less. Part of the problem at, at Laverne is the fact that if some group or some got funds available to build a facility the weight room. in a poor location that created a problem. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I would like assurance because everyone involved is here uh, that there are policies in place that will prohibit and prevent that type of thing because the facility, I think it is great when a, uh, a community organization and so on can help with the funding, that is, that is just great. But it needs to be ran through the, the principal or someone there doesn't need to have that authority. It needs to be ran through we have a, we we have maintenance, a, yeah. yes. engineering. Through, it least, needs to be ran through safety. All that safety and the school. We, we, we have a new policy now, and if you'd like to see that, mm -hmm. email me the policy. Well, you go to our website it's and, there. and go it's there. to go to the okay. engineering mm -hmm. and construction department, and it says request for construction. And it's a link, and it's got 30, mm -hmm. 30 questions. Yeah. Everything from Title IX implications yeah. all up to safety, everything. I, I think, you know, the, yeah, the whole thing, because we wouldn't be having the discussion about Laverne had some can, poor choices not be made. Can you bring me up to date? That's the, once again, in my mind, we had already funded. We only, funded those the, projects. we only funded the design. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't fund any construction. And we did the seating that we had to the do ADA, the ADA, the ADA handicap accessible. Funded. So from that perspective, where are we right now and what funds are needed? Bathrooms. Right, and concessions. And concessions. The, the way these stadiums were designed is, you have, right now, like Smyrna, I can speak to that, you have concessions underneath the home mm -hmm. bleachers, right. and which is a dark confined area and you have the restrooms only on the home side. Right. It's a very small space to maneuver in and when you've got a large game and a huge game and our um, our district has changed and we're not just playing Rutherford County Schools any longer and so the climate of the people coming into these games is different and so it's something we have to be cognizant of. Is this on the opposite on the visitor side? For just, Smyrna, everything's on the home side. Everything's on the home side. Everything's on the home side right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're wanting to change that. We're wanting to. That's the, what the design is on. But how, how much? How much? Because you got to walk a long ways. I got to have some business side. Well, it's a long ways. I know. I'm. I'm if the amount has gone up it recently, would be. Right. the last ten or eleven years we've been discussing it. The, the last number that I saw, we thought it was going to be. A few, a few hundred thousand ended being like 1.5 feet for each school. That's what yeah. comes that, to That includes the bleachers, though. Okay. Yeah. That includes the bleachers. That's just yeah. not the restrooms okay. and the concessions. Can you sort that out for yes, us? Yes, sir. Well, okay. we need an updated bid anyway, because right. th those are yeah. old, bad numbers. Well, we the last time we bid it was Stewart's Creek High School. That, that was the last time it was. We actually got a real number, and it was unfunded. Yeah. With Stewart's Creek High. And so in most all the other schools, what you'll see is you have the, rest, the uh, restrooms and the concessions in the end zone. So it's a right. neutral area. Everybody right. comes up from their side, they conduct their business, they go back to their That's side. Right. And it's a much more visible That's area right. and it's an easier way for SROs mm -hmm. to, to be able to monitor the area and make sure it's, it, everything is safe. And you okay. think about those schools, what, 40 years old or? 30. 30 years old and, and 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were built before I was elected, so they. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they yeah. they were built smaller scale than the existing right. Murfreesboro right. schools, and mm -hmm. so that's not because they were much smaller. That's community. And the county was 150 yeah. yeah. 
325,000 right. against what? 325,000 yeah. yeah. now. Well, if everybody opened their email today, you probably saw this email that the mayor forwarded out from yes. the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And that was um, when they showed how many people are moving into our area um, in Rutherford County daily. Chamber of Commerce, based on the um, U.S. Department of um, Census Bureau, 23 people a day are moving into Rutherford County, 16 into Williamson County, 11 into Wilson County, 10 into Davidson. So you have 25% of the growth for our area is moving to this county every day, which just reaffirmed my position, there's never going to be a good time to fund this project. So, um, anyway, so the, Saturday. The whole, the whole deal. If you guys remember at our last commission meeting, we approved over 400 new building lots. Over mm -hmm. 400. We did at the commission level. The planning commission yesterday uh, we did. approved 147 yesterday, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's in just in one month. Yeah. Yeah. So we're back to where we were prior to 2008, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even exceeding it right now. And they're coming. And, and yeah, I, I don't know how to slow it down. Okay. I'm not going on record to say we should slow it down, but but it's uncontrolled, and there's there's no way there's just no way to to plan for it. And then before I let you all go, I'm going to remind you, remind you one more time about the joint meeting May 21st. We'll be at Central Office. It will be at 5:30. Um, we will not have a meeting for Health and Ed the following week. That will be our Health and Ed meeting for the month of May. Um, and so I, I don't expect, unless you've got some sort of updated communication on any numbers, I, the right. numbers that will work from what right. we have. Uh, yeah, right. and see what comes. Right, right. So, so I remind everybody that we will not be here next month. So do not show up here next month. All right. Thank you all, especially the new folks. I know this is a little baptism by fire going through the first budget process. Um, for, for schools, but keep in mind, this in mind too, when you add in the, the capital projects, this is 75% of every Rutherford County tax dollar is focused through education. So it's a huge responsibility that you have sitting on this committee. Um, this is, so I appreciate you all being able to devote the time and attention to this because it's been a long night. And, and Mr. Spurlock, Trey, excellent job. First time out of the gate. Jeff, I always expect you to do an excellent job. Thank you. So, well, he's done such a great job, we're going to bring him back next year. I, I think we should. I think, I'm, can we draft him? Like, I've got the NFL draft in my mind. Let's just draft him and make him so nice. You just got hired, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So anyway, there, if there's no more business, we stand adjourned. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.